And it's like, no, there's a six motherfucking movies with dinosaurs. We aren't tired of dinosaurs. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? Welcome to Recotopia, a happy home for recommended movies, shows, and music from two people you can definitely trust. Trustability varies by region, no guarantee is implied. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Atkinson and Jeremy Scott. You didn't say anything to me. You didn't do anything to me. Well, that's what I was thinking, like. I just don't like you no more. Hello. Hello, everybody. This is the special episode, because Aaron's here. That's why. (laughs) Yeah. We're just going to talk about regular stuff today. Nothing like, you know, big or anything. Not like the whole year of movies encapsulated into <laughs> Nothing like whatever. that, no. Um, but uh, yeah, how how you guys doing? Jeremy's here. Aaron's mm-hmm. here. How mm-hmm. you guys doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I yeah. am excited about this show. <clears throat> yeah, me too. I, I look yeah. forward to it every year. I think I say it every year. It's one of my, mm-hmm. one of my favorite uh, days of the year is getting to talk uh, the year in movies with you guys. It's a lot of fun. So yeah. All right. This is Recotopia episode 56. We will be doing the year in movies 2022. I totally lied before that. No, you believe me too. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> uh hello everybody out there in chat who have come here to watch us on a Tuesday talking about the best of uh this year and uh you know where else do we start? But what is, I think, the number one movie of the year, Top Gun Maverick. Mm. Um uh i watched this movie i knew it was going to be huge i didn't know it was going to be this huge but i knew it was going to be huge because i saw it on opening night and uh there were people who were quote fired up after that (laughs) movie people who were so fired up that i decided not to leave the parking lot until everybody had left that's how fired up people (laughs) were about top gun maverick uh what do you guys think about this movie um it was on earlier this morning uh and yeah like, right up to showtime it, i think the credits were rolling right when we were getting started behind the scenes uh i love it um it's vastly superior to the original the, the original is not terrible but it it relies on a lot of nostalgia and 80s music and uh <clears throat> it's got everything you want in a summer blockbuster um and that moment near the end when that enemy plane stops on a dime and starts spinning and they're both like, <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, mm-hmm. That gives me goosebumps every time I see it. So yeah, I love it. Aaron. It's, it's just top notch old school movie making, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's just, it's top notch storytelling. It's practical effects. It's just saying, we're going to actually go up and fighter planes, do cool stuff and shoot it on actual film. Like it's, it's the, the heart behind it is so real and passionate. And I think that comes through. And a lot of that's Cruz, uh, you know, his, his whole like do it all for real kind of vibe. Um, and it just works. It doesn't work quite as well. I don't think if the, the, the storytelling doesn't work as well but the storytelling is just so tight and so perfect they get to that run through where he you know comes in and everybody knows is somehow he has secured a jet and he's going to make this run through at the exact time that they're all looking at the screen but it just works the Mm -hmm. cut to the reaction shots everything in this movie is just it's just adrenaline it's just it's really really cool yeah i like this one yeah, I, I liked it. I was surprised at how much people really liked it, though. Like, it was kind of that kind of a crazy thing. And it it kind of it benefited from a summer that was kind of eh, meh, shitty. Um, it played all summer. It played forever. Yep. Like, it played, it played like a movie back in the 90s would play uh, when it when it would do when something would do well. Um, but yeah, I liked it. Uh, I think, I think people went, I think it's way overrated at this point, but it's, but it's still good. I mean, it's like everything you guys were saying It's everything about it makes the, is what, what makes it such a, you know, special movie this year and everything. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Top Gun Maverick. Now, uh, I don't know if Avatar two has a chance to beat it domestically. 
uh, but it's like 40 million or so behind. Um, mm-hmm. And Aaron, I know you really wanted to talk about this movie. So let's talk about Avatar 2 while we're here. Um, well, it seems it seems like when a movie has uh, dominated will it ever come out conversation for the last decade or more, <laughs> that it's mm-hmm. probably worth at least mentioning that it came out uh, and made boatloads of money, as apparently all James Cameron movies uh, do. You're correct. Mm-hmm. It is second domestically. Uh, for the year it is easily first worldwide um oh yeah yeah and, by far uh over two billion right two and over two billion yeah just just wild um i really enjoyed this and i'm on record as saying that i think the story is a lot better here uh i think it's clear that it wasn't just cameron doing the story on this that he brought some people in um to really build some some interesting connections some interesting relationships i honestly think that for a setup movie, this is really good work. Like, because this, you can tell this movie is doing a lot of relational setup for payoffs that are gonna happen down the road. Uh, There are characters who are related to someone, but with other people. And like, there are moments where somebody has to make a choice to save somebody else or kill somebody else. That's going to pay like relational, emotional dividends story-wise like in episode three or four or whatever. And so you can tell there's a lot of setup going on here, but it still feels very contained. And I think a lot of that has to do with Cameron's ability to use set pieces to really drive story. And um, that final battle slash uh, Titanic two, you know, slash everything that's going on there at the end is, it's just captivating. I was just really enthralled with all of it. So, yeah. yeah, I and I pretty much liked it too. I like way better than the first one. Uh, and the presentation that I saw was really well done, three D, uh, bright three D too, mm-hmm. which is something I had never really seen before. Those three D either came a long way or they did it just right for this one showing that I watched uh, when I saw it. But um, but uh, Avatar, it's uh, you don't know if you if if this is sort of uh uh been swirling around in your head but avatar even it's not the it's it's the third of these three movies that i'm thinking about has a similar story to wakanda forever and it has a similar story to the woman king sure. all three of those movies have have a lot of similarities there's a lot of tiny details obviously mm-hmm. that are that are completely different but but yeah, like some of the story details in some of those movies are just exact it's always in all three of the movies, there's a resource that that a you know imperialist nation wants or an imperialist world wants, mm-hmm. and there's two tribes and one tribe like it doesn't doesn't happen this much in Avatar. It happens in the other two movies, but uh, there are two tribes who are, who stand to lose a lot based on this imperialist nation whatever trying to steal it, and uh, and in then two of the movies, the two tribes go to war over that uh that resource the the way they handle that resource and everything i thought that was an interesting thing that i saw sort of a theme going through these movies uh for 2022 it's clear Um, cameron wants to make a point with this universe uh about ecology about environmentalism like it's he has a clear message that he is mm -hmm. he's working with here one thing i that separates this from the first one i think is in in the first one it really is about militaristic power and the idea that the military uh will be seeking these things in this one it's commercial power right like the the Mm -hmm. what we're seeing here are pirates quote unquote uh as part of the the idea and even the military part of it is kind of a break off from the military they're kind of their own thing so uh so it kind of shifts into a different angle on what he's saying about protecting resources protecting the environment and not um mining it to death uh in those ways and and you're correct about the the presentation i i didn't uh speak about the variable high frame rate which i just think is great i love it i know for some people the soap opera effect is a little bit too distracting totally get that to each their own for me i love the clarity of it and the brightness you talk about is also part of the frame rate thing because when there's uh more specific frames per second it actually makes the the image brighter uh as well so it's a it's a really interesting uh 
thing that happens there too that that I've noticed it, with high frame rate stuff. It probably worked for me in this instance because it's more animated than usual. Correct. Um, yeah. The uh, the 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 other ones that have done this in the past, uh, like the Will Smith movie that I can't think of right now. Yes, <laughs> I can't think uh, of the name either. But yeah, the you know the the that movie was I I had a hard time getting past that that soap opera effect there. And mm-hmm. I think this one it works pretty well. I think it may just be a matter of like what kind of movie you're pre- presenting to me. Uh, for that to work well Um, and it's also the first movie ever to do variable high frame rate where the mm -hmm. frame rate actually well to be clear the frame rate is what it is for the entire thing but during sections it doubles up frames so that it appears to be a lower frame rate uh during scenes that are just talking or or those kind of things yeah, so the movie it, it, gemini man slab just told us correct gemini man was the one that was starting to think of um uh, all right, on to let's see, let's let's move around here and uh, wow, there's a lot of just like I like how you didn't even like you knew I had nothing to say about that movie, so you didn't even throw <laughs> yeah. it for me. Well, I, I like mean, that you know me that well. Well, I know you didn't see it either, so uh, so uh, so yeah, no, uh, no point, no point. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, let's go to something Oscar nominated here, let's go to Elvis um mm. oh okay yeah mm. we're, we're gonna go all around here all all around and jeremy you specifically said that you might want to want say something about this so let's talk about elvis it's one of those it's one of those weird movies that as i'm watching it i'm like there are lots of good things here but i'm not sure i'm digging it and then like a week later i'm like yeah that was really good i enjoyed that like it's probably without da- a doubt my favorite baz Luhrmann movie um, and there's plenty of Baz in this movie, but I feel like he either channeled it through Tom Hanks and Austin Butler or just toned it down. Um, and yeah, Austin Butler doesn't necessarily look, it's kind of like that solo movie situation where he doesn't really look like Elvis, but he embodies that persona. Cause at the end of the movie, they show you, they basically show you the real footage that they had just shown you of Austin Butler doing seventies old Elvis singing that song at the piano on stage. And, uh, it's eerie how much he channeled him. So, I mean, uh, Tom Hanks is doing something weird and it doesn't really bother me. Um, and, uh, I enjoyed it a lot more than I expected to. Hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of the year for Tom Hanks doing something weird in movies. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's making some interesting choices, which I kind of like, I like that he's, you know, trying some stuff. It doesn't always work. I don't think it works here. I think Hanks is kind of one of the only things about this movie that doesn't work for me, though. I really like this movie. And in fact, it's grown on me quite a bit since uh, I've watched it uh, the first time and I've watched it uh, another time since then. Um, part part of that is the Austin Butler performance. It's really incredible. Uh, it's really great work. Part of it is I I kind of love this Baz Lermanized version of what a biopic is. Like there's there's something freeing about his ability just to take how this stuff usually works and just go, nah, I'm just gonna do some sort of weird cross cut, um, you know, adrenalized thing to get us to the next place. Um, I don't know. It's cre- it's creative. I like the the creativity in it um, to to do a lot of what it does. So yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy watching this, um, if nothing else. I, I wasn't a big fan of this movie. I, I, I liked it. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, the thing for me is when you call a movie Elvis, it should be about his drive, his, his sort of like what, what makes him tick, what made him get into the, it didn't feel like it gave me enough on that. It gives you some hints and flashbacks and things like that. The show's you know, he may have been more than inspired by things that he heard in his youth, uh, to become, uh, uh, interested in music, but, uh, it, it just feels so much more like Tom Hanks's movie than, mm-hmm. than Elvis's movie. And so I was just, uh, I was a little disappointed in the presentation of this one. Uh, so, and it was long too, right? This was like a two and yes. a half something hour yeah. movie. Yeah, it's long. Um, so I, so I was sitting there going, I know that Tom Hanks is your, is your star, uh, you know, is your star player in this, but man, I, I could have, I could have 
we could have we could have known that he was an evil influence or evil presence in elvis's life without having him be the main guy it felt like sometimes in this movie yeah i've noticed this with other biopics too when you steal agency from the central person in your your story you steal the ability for us to really learn anything about them too and so Mm -hmm. because because elvis in this and i would say even more freddie mercury in the the queen one because they don't seem to be making it because the whole movie is about how other people are moving them like a chess piece or a pawn or whatever well then you don't get to to connect to that central character in a meaningful way and be able to really experience kind of who they are what the movie is saying about them what what is this movie saying about elvis it's it's kind of a uh you know a missed opportunity as the whitney houston one was the same way Mm. and you know Mm -hmm. we're not i don't think we'll talk about that one so i'll just mention it here but uh it was it was a terrible movie one of the worst biopics Mm. i've ever seen Mm. and so much Mm. of that has to do with some of these the people who lo- know and love these people are the ones putting it together and so it strips any of that negative agency out of uh you know the main characters so yeah mm-hmm. uh continuing on some oscars here let's go with all quiet on the western front uh mm-hmm. um uh this this movie i don't i guess it, it i guess like netflix did the did what they always do with this i don't remember a showing here in nashville but maybe there I, i'm sure there was belcourt usually runs these these uh things but netflix uh with uh with a chance at some oscars here um uh, especially in the best international film category uh but this has gotten nominated for best picture as well um uh it's a this is a, a you know a big anti-war film i've never read i've never read the book or or seen the uh the other couple of adaptations of this um and i've i, I found this really good there were some moments though the, so the way they framed this movie is a little off for me but like um because it because it makes it seem like the horrors of war are only horrible if there's a if there's a negotiation going on that doesn't get finished in time you know what i mean it, no it's i like, do it, i do yeah it, it's it's not it's not it's it, it's not saying that it's horrible any other time really uh i i do say i, I do think the way they present this is true to life because i think even uh this was happening all over the world as far as recruitment was concerned uh they were showing uh, young kids like how great this was going to be when you get out there and you and you go to war and you're going to win it for your team and blah 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 and like of course you get there and the reality is immediately smack you in the face and this movie smacks you in the face with a lot of gory terrible violence it's that's as i mean that's as anti-war as it gets uh and it's and it's really well done really well shot i think it's great but like so I was sitting there going, yeah, I don't know. It's really, it's disappointing that they haven't gotten done with this treaty yet all the way through this movie. These people are dying. But so anyway. I mean, the reason I haven't seen it is because of that. I've heard it's extremely graphic and devastating. And I just mm-hmm. need to be in a certain place to go there. And I haven't gotten there yet. So mm-hmm. Aaron, what yeah. do you think of this movie? I think on a technical level, it's quite an achievement. Um, mm-hmm. It is, it is stunningly presented sound visual all of the acting it's it's really really well done i got about halfway in and was just like i don't know that i need another war as hell movie like i just yeah. like i i get it like i'm on board i am so on board like <laughs> let's let's stop doing war i'm totally with mm-hmm. you war what mm-hmm. is it good for like <laughs> i'm here right uh and i just don't know how much trauma i need to put myself through you know, for what purpose? Now, the purpose in this case is to watch a piece of, you know, uh, entertainment. I, you know, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's partially my job to know these stuff and to watch these things. But if, if I had just been a regular person watching this, I think about halfway through, I may have just said, you know what? I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I understand. And as beautiful as this is, and as amazing as this is, it's, it's traumatic to watch and I don't like feeling pain. It's just not something mm-hmm. I enjoy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. uh, so I'm out because mm-hmm. y- you're not, you're not seeing, there's not a lot new here, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Not really. So yeah. Mm. Um, I'll continue on some more Oscars here. Let's, let's completely switch gears and go with the Fableman's, the Steven Spielberg movie. Um, uh, sort of the, one of our, um, 
one of our uh uh i guess uh uh, odes to film or, or, uh, you know, our, uh, you know, appreciation of, of all things, movies, kind of movie, um, uh, semi autobiographical, uh, in nature. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. I was actually surprised how much I liked the Fable, Fablemans. Um, uh, I was expecting latter day Spielberg, which hasn't been very good. I mean, West side story, I thought was actually his best movie he'd made in years. And so he kind of continues it with this one. Uh, but, uh, I was still kind of like in this, I don't know. I don't know if I want to watch this, but I, I really, really, really liked this. I'm with you. I think this is a great movie. Um, I'm, I'm in the bag for Spielberg. I even like a lot of his recent stuff that other people uh, didn't. I just think he understands structure and story innately now like he doesn't even really have to you know uh process i just think it's a part of him and this movie is so well structured and you get exactly what all the characters are about why they're there what's going on uh i think it's interesting that he laid under this a theme of how he has used cinema to fight his own demons like he's mm -hmm. used making movies as a way to confront things he's afraid of. And that then like in a meta way, this movie is kind of the thing he's most afraid of, which is people knowing actually him and his life and his, you know, his parents and, and these kind of things. Um, and so there's a, there's a real interesting meta level to this movie uh, that I picked up on as well that, that I really enjoyed, but it's just made really well. It's got great performances one probably the best cameo of the year at the end like Easily. it's you know it's it's so much fun um so yeah i like the fablemans uh, quite a bit mm -hmm. it's there's a handful of movies that my brother's coming back this weekend and it's, that's on a that's on a list of a handful of movies we're going to watch together so i haven't gotten there yet nice. but i am very excited to see it and i think i think this might be your best picture winner really Ooh, um, interesting interesting spielberg always always turns heads um the academy loves movies about making movies and uh when we get to everything everywhere i will share my reservations on that winning um mm. <clears throat> because uh i think that it's going to get upset even though it looks like the favorite so, well i'm uh, calling this fablements <clears throat> well um speaking of a love letter to film that uh, hollywood didn't like apparently it would be babylon since i'll uh, go ahead and uh <laughs> Uh, since we're on that theme, uh, everything. Now, I watched this. I was underwhelmed. I did not like any of the characters that were in it. Uh, they are all horrible people to me. Um, Even the Diego Calva one? Even no, he, okay, yeah, not okay. Him. No, I'm just. I was genuinely but, asking. I was but, genuinely asking. But the but I will say this: the the ending of the movie, I don't think is earned at all um that they, they, it's one of those it's a it's the same ending in cinema paradiso by the way it's the exact same ending mm. and uh and in cinema paradiso with a little it, more avatar <laughs> with a little bit more avatar right um uh cinema paradiso though i thought like had it really built up to its final uh you know images and this one i was like uh, i mean yeah kind of sort of i guess and it's this one of these things where it's like, you know, you can see Damien Chazelle saying, boy, I love film. I love every kind of film. Look at this. We're going to be even Avatar is going to show up in my arty movie and blah, 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 and all this. And I was just like, no, this none of this to me, none of this built up to something good. Now, I will I will watch it again at some point because it's Chazelle and he's always worth giving it another look. But I have a feeling that you loved Babylon. So. <laughs> more than, more than mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I a feeling. More than a feeling. Yeah. I think I was trying the other day to put my finger on what it is about Chazelle's movies that really gets under my skin. And I think it's every single one of his movies, uh, aside from the Park Bench one, which I actually haven't seen, um, his, his first uh, movie, but um, from Whiplash you know, Whiplash, La La Land, First Man, and now Babylon, they are all dealing with the same question, which is, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Mm. And I think there's something really compelling about that question for me. So for instance, in Babylon, since that's what we're talking about, 
The question is, is the magic of movies worth the cesspool <laughs> that it has come from or been built on and the careers and the humans that have been destroyed by it and mm -hmm. all of those things? Is that worth it? And that question is compelling to me. I also, Singing in the Rain is my favorite movie of all time. It has been for a long time. And I went into this knowing that it was kind of an homage to Singing in the Rain. What I didn't realize is that it's it's a fictional um, backstory to the actual making of Singing in the Rain. Like it, it, it's not just that it pays homage to this movie. It literally says to you, have you thought about the actual humans who put together this movie that is pure joy and fun and love? And what if their stories were full of dirt and trauma in terror and all of these things, does that change how you feel about singing in the rain? And I think it's a really interesting, valid question. Um, did the movie have to go as hard as it did? I think maybe it did. I don't know. It goes really hard because I think Chazelle really wants to sell it. Um, but I also think it's just a great opportunity for him to play and to have fun doing some some oneers and some really interesting things with the camera and some of those things as well. Um, but uh, I'm with you. The, the only character that was likable to me was Di uh, Diego Calva's character. And I think mm -hmm. that's intentional. I think he's you know supposed to be the one that gets away and the one who yeah. at the end is asking, is it worth it? What this did to my friends is this joy I'm feeling, is it worth it? Um, so yeah, I'm always moved by his movies and this one is, is no different. I, I really, uh, I've seen it three times now, as long as it is, I've seen it three Jesus. times now and, wow. uh, I, I will see it again this weekend, uh, in anticipation of the Oscars and it, it, I pick up something different every time. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty intricate. I'm scared yeah. to watch this movie because I feel like it will finally crush the notion that Amsterdam and Babylon are the same movie. Um, <laughs> they aren't the same yeah. movie, no. <laughs> Which I've only really seen posters and trailers for both of them, and I think Margot Robbie is the problem here. But uh, they both feel like the same movie to me, and then once I watch one of them, I won't be able to have that anymore. Well, you could watch one of them and still have that. You just That's can't watch true. them both. That's true. I can't <laughs> watch them. have to pick one. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and for those of you scoring at home, 175 movies are on our list. We're not going to be talking about 175 <laughs> movies. It's true. But Aaron saw all of those 175 movies, and he saw fucking Babylon three times. <laughs> it's true. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. so uh, um, uh, let's uh, let's um, let's let's see. Let's get to some more box office, I guess. Let's uh, let's talk about the Batman, which Jeremy. Was this the only movie you saw in theaters last year? <laughs> yes, this is the only movie I've seen in theaters since. No, actually, this and Ambulance at Sin Week. Yeah, are the that's only right. Ambulance I've seen in theaters since because the Ambulance was worth it. No context uh, needed. Yeah, for real. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Batman I saw with you and Jonathan and my wife, um, and that was a pretty good experience. There's the thing that will always hold this movie down is it's 25 minutes too long and mm -hmm. and i'm not entirely sure how matt reeves got that kind of clout um and i know exactly where to cut it and it's that section where he goes from john taturo back to alfred back to john taturo and it's like 20 minutes seriously of him being told one thing about who killed his dad then he goes to mm -hmm. alfred he's like oh no that guy's a criminal he's lying oh and bruce is just like okay i'll believe what everybody mm. tells me um yeah and you cut all of that and i think this is nearly a perfect film i love gotham city in this movie i think pattinson is great i love the the, the visual design um mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's a shot near the end that is maybe the batmaniest thing i've ever seen um uh, when he comes through the ceiling of that arena and he float flies down onto the stage and just kind of, not the stage, the jumbotron, but just kind of arrives on the scene of this chaos and it gives me chills every time I see it. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see where he goes from here. Um, and uh, I'm all in. Colin Farrell deserves an Academy Award that I don't think he Yeah. Does. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Paul Dano is great in that movie too. Like, I feel like Paul Dano had, had two great performances in the past year that, Overall, he just didn't get very much, like, I don't know, awards love for uh, in the end. Uh, he's one of the snubs, I think, uh, from the Fablemans. Uh, uh, but uh, he's great in this. And it, and it just goes to show 
don't worry about who gets cast as long as it's a good actor mm -hmm. don't worry about who gets cast for these villains and batman and all this just get a good actor and you're fine usually usually don't don't give me examples of bad ones because i know they're bad ones but for the most part, they nail these down pretty pretty well. I yeah say. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there was much fretting over Paul Dano being the Riddler, but like it seems like that's the type of thing that we always worry about, and then it ends up being good usually. Yeah, so. they freaked out when they cast Affleck, and then he turned out to be good. They freaked out when they cast Pattinson, he turned out to be good. I just want to know the story of the Colin Farrell casting. Like, I, mm -hmm. like, I feel like Matt Reeves went to him and said, "I want you to play a character that looks nothing like you." and that you've never played before, but I know you're going to nail it. Like, I just don't mm -hmm. know how he knew that was going to turn out so great. Also, best yeah. Batmobile ever, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Aaron, anything to say about the Batman? I didn't enjoy it as much as Jeremy. Um, in fact, I didn't enjoy it much at all. I, I found <laughs> it. I found mm. it. Uh, I found it beautiful. I. I was really. Uh, it's Reeves, right? That the, uh, mm -hmm. directed this. I'm really impressed with his movie making. I think. I think he's really good at what he does. Um, Colin Farrell could win an Academy Award for this if he were in the movie. He's clearly not in the movie anywhere. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's true. <laughs> uh, I think for me, I think I started to get, and I need to give this one another chance. I know I do, but I started to get distracted, distracted by this underlying message that just started jumping out at me that the whole movie is about how much Batman sucks. Like just how, <laughs> like how much we're not supposed to root for him. And I'm just like, well, I then then why are like, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? And so I think over the course of a few movies, maybe that arc gets a little bit better. Um, but I kind of felt I, I kind of felt if I liked Batman by the end that I was a terrible person. <laughs> no, no, I totally disagree. Okay, I think, tell me. I think that is his journey. He thinks Batman might be bad. And right. At the end, there's this whole monologue where he's like, I might be causing more problems than i'm solving but that right. doesn't mean yeah. i should stop trying um and that whole climax is him being a hero without going around beating thugs ass in the subway but so he you actually think he is a you think he responder. had a moment of change at the end maybe i just I think didn't so. see that okay all right i think so i think that and i have never seen a film where bruce wayne had to wrestle with that like there's no yeah there's i just, no christian bale I agree he's like am i really the bad guy in fact it's the opposite he's mm -hmm. like holier than thou the whole trilogy uh so i think i don't know obviously but i think reeves wants to give us a journey that starts out in year two like this movie does and maybe things aren't going super well and maybe he's not the hero he thinks he is and what does that how does that inform where he goes from here? i can see I, that i fully admit I love this like you love Avatar. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not trying to change your mind on your opinion of the film. No, um, but I, I do think the film is asking: Does Batman suck? Um, mm. And maybe in this maybe in this version he he does, and he's got to be something different. Well, the cognitive dissonance is this, right? That Batman as a character, vigilante justice is his whole thing. And this movie is asking the question, is vigilante justice good? And I and I don't think the movie says it is. I agree. So the, the movie is saying his whole thing is bad. So I don't know where we where we go from there. Um, that was what I was wrestling with. And I think sure. it overall distracted me from what is a really well put together movie with some amazing stuff. So yeah. Uh, we managed to, uh, again, talk about the Batman without talking about Zoe Kravitz and <laughs> I, we did that in the whole review. And it's like, it's to me, it's like, it's like, that's how I feel like that's one of my main issues with the Batman, even though I liked it is that I thought she was kind of pushed to the side a little bit, mm. uh, in that movie. And it gets to the point when you're talking about the plot of this movie, it's hard. It's she's, she's involved. She's not like, yeah. in, it doesn't seem terribly yeah. integral to it. Uh, but, uh, anyway, um, I'm going to go through, I'm going to run the gamut on comic book movies. I think comic book movies had their worst year, even though money, they, they're still making money, mm -hmm. but I think they had their worst year ever this year, uh, as quality wise. Um, uh, now I liked Dr. Strange the first time I watched it, the Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness movie, uh, running through it the second time. I didn't like it as much, but I do really dig what Sam Raimi is trying to do with Dr. Strange. Um, and so I still will hold it a little bit in higher regard than, uh, some of these, but, uh, I don't know where the, I think the problem is now, I think when this, 
all started back with Iron Man back in the day. We kind of had this idea of where it was headed. And then as after the Avengers, we kind of had an idea of where it was going. And then it finally culminated in that big, you know, Avengers Endgame and everything. And we knew where it was going. Now, if it, it could be just because COVID screwed everything up or what, I don't know. I have no clue where these movies are going anymore. Hmm. What is the, what is their overall, what is their overall that they're headed towards? I know that they're making Kang the next big bad. I think that is, mm-hmm. that's, that's going to be the, that's going to be the sort of the through line on all of this, but like all the movies that have come out so far have just kind of, I don't know. They've just been sequels to existing movies and nothing really. Maybe I'm completely wrong about that. Maybe that's how confused I am is that I don't see, <laughs> I don't see no, Kang you're not wrong. in all these other movies. So you're not wrong. And you're also not abnormal in the fact that you probably haven't watched all the TV shows either. Right? Like, and that's no, and, uh, and the only thing I saw was Loki. Now Loki's key in all of this. It is. I have seen Loki, uh, but I didn't see, you know, uh, Captain America, the, no, was it, uh, the Falcon and the winter soldier. Falcon and the winter didn't soldier see that. Yeah. Didn't see that. Uh, was, didn't see Hawkeye. Okay. Yeah. Um, Miss Marvel. She Hulk. Yeah, Miss Marvel. Any of those or the She Hulk? Yeah, I didn't see any of those. I think they uh, overestimated how many people were gonna, how many people that watched the films were gonna watch the TV shows. I've even mm-hmm. seen that they're, I think, planning to pull back the number of shows Correct. they make in the coming years. Uh, that has to be a signal that they're not doing the volume that they expected, even if they're doing big volume. I haven't watched any of them. I haven't watched a single MCU show, and I eventually will, maybe? I don't know. Enough of what happens in them that is important to the movies leaks out onto Twitter anyway. Uh, and I don't know if I want to spend 10 hours uh, just to be mm-hmm. caught up on everything that might uh, be relevant in the next, I don't know, Captain America movie? I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just not if me. I, I have a line. If you're not looking at them as uh, plot information... Um, the, the only one I would recommend you watch just for entertainment value is WandaVision. I think WandaVision is really entertaining, uh, mm-hmm. as a TV mm-hmm. show and has a really interesting concept. Um, but, uh, but the others are, are driving plot. I'm not saying they're bad. They, they're entertaining. They're fine. Chris, I think to go back to your, your point about, uh, you know, where are we going with all of this and how these movies seem to lack the momentum? I think you're absolutely right. I think it'll become clear here probably pretty quickly that we're headed towards, finding a way to make a single timeline in a single universe and that the idea is that we cannot exist in the multiverse. These incursions that we hear about in Doctor Strange and some of the other movies are going to create a real problem. Kang's going to, you know, be part of that. And eventually the Avengers will have to come together and, you know, uh, simplify everything again and just, you know, cut off the, the multiverses. They'll need, um, they'll need Shuri, who is, who is the de facto, uh, Tony Stark at this mm-hmm. point mm-hmm. to, uh, invent a machine in five seconds using her AI that she uses in Wakanda mm-hmm. forever mm-hmm. to, uh, I was sitting there, there were, there were moments I'm, I'm skipping into Wakanda forever. I need to go back to, uh, Dr. Strange real briefly, but. Uh, but, but, uh, there were moments in black Panther where I thought Shuri is, they, they're filming her the exact same way they did Tony Stark back in the day. They're like, mm. I was uh, halfway expecting her to say, and, you know, 50 years later, you're still taking me to school and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, you know, um, but, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, Dr. Strange, uh, Dr. Strange too had a lot to do with, uh, with the Wanda vision, uh, but did, it totally Any undid the, WandaVision, though. <laughs> it totally, it, that's the big problem with Doctor Strange, ultimately, uh, right? Like, like all of that work they did to sort of get her back to normal a bit by the end well, of it. at least make her new actually Was actually upended by the very last episode. But like Correct. the very end of the last episode, like upended it so that they mm-hmm. could just go ahead and do this. Yes. So yeah, that was a real disappointing thing to go through that journey and then be like, nope, nope, she's evil again. She wants to uh, ruin somebody. That's the other problem. The, the, the plot line is exactly Cloverfield paradox. It's exactly that, 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 uh, that story that they did mm-hmm. in that. Um, so anyway, uh, but you've seen all the shows. I have. How yeah, many everyone. of the shows so far? have to do with any of the movies that have come out besides loki uh wandavision um, well, yeah, the loki and wandavision and 
as far as the future, I don't know. I'm sure Miss Marvel will play into the future because the Marvels is coming out as a movie and mm -hmm. she will be in that. Uh, the answer is not many of them. And sometimes that's a bonus. Like, I like that about She-Hulk, actually. I think She-Hulk is also kind of a fun show. Um, and it's not trying to play into any of the overarching stuff. Um, so I would have to, I'd have to, uh, pop open a list and kind of look through the others and, and see if, if any of them do. But for the most part, the only like real, like, oh my goodness, I can't believe they did this on TV was to introduce Jonathan Majors as Kang on a, t on one of the TV shows, uh, when he's going to be the ultimate, you know, big bag, uh, bad in the, yeah. the series. Yeah. It's funny. There's a lot of good comments coming in because we're in the comic book phase and everybody's got the comic got, got <laughs> the comic book knowledge and everything. You know, Rando says uh, they added a new Tony Stark with that MIT student. Yeah, very well could be the new That's, the MIT uh, student. Ironheart, right? From the comics. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I yeah. think you're right. So she she I think is extremely smart, but I think mm -hmm. the MCU is showing Cherie to be smarter, but uh Ironheart may take Tony's place in terms of uh battle capabilities. And yeah. She wears a suit and all that stuff. Yeah, Riri. <clears throat> and uh I'm gonna get to Wakanda Forever because we just talked about it. Like Nick says Wakanda Forever is actually Iron Man 2. And this is something that I was thinking during the movie was that it's Iron Man 2 all over again. Mm -hmm. It's people going to uh congressional hearings about this technology they have and that they want and they want to have for themselves and so on and so forth and um and uh and that's how it begins and that's how that's how the uh we have the u.s and france apparently the only two countries that want vibranium in the world <laughs> uh but uh but uh that that's the uh that's the sort of the story of of this i mean they the the movie is uh is sort of um is sort of a, like an elegy to Chadwick Boseman. Of course, there's a, a beginning of the beginning of part of this movie, and of course the Marvel logos at the beginning, which we probably won't send just because <laughs> and not, not preemptively not sending something, but um, but uh, but uh, there's that, and then there's the like there's like five minutes at the end of this movie too, but. Um, but Wakanda Forever is is has got the same thing where it's um, where you know the U.S. wants that vibranium and they're going to try to attack and and uh, we uncover a new uh, a new group of people right with the the Talacan is that what it is the ta is that what it is i can't remember the name of that it sounds possible i would have to look it up um yeah, but yeah something like that um uh they have their own they have their own vibranium that uh, and the, and this mit student that we've been talking about has discovered a a, vib a vibranium detector of some sort okay so uh um, <laughs> and uh and uh and uh the, both the the uh, the wakandans and the talicans are uh gonna fight because uh the wakandans want to uh what is it i can't remember exactly what they're what they want the the uh the talicans don't want them to be anywhere near it and the wakandans are like well we can we can share a little bit maybe i can't remember what it is but like ultimately they go to they don't agree on what 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 should go on with the vibranium or anything anyway what did you think of wakanda forever aaron uh, I ha I am with you in that I have a, a lot of ambivalence for the Marvel stuff this year. Um, it, it really seems like they're flailing a little bit. I liked the 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 all the stuff that they did to honor Bozeman. I thought worked really really well. I thought the funeral worked really well. I thought the stuff at the end worked really well. Felt meaningful to me. Part of that probably has to do because I can see the reality in the acting. You know, mm -hmm. like I know these people aren't just acting. There's a real loss there that they're experiencing, and that is emotional to me. So that's part mm -hmm. of probably why it works. As far as a comic book movie, it's a lot of whiz bang fun, and that's okay. Like I had a decent time at these movies. I just didn't come out of them thinking deeply about anything or super excited to see it again. It's just, it's becoming, they're becoming episodes of a good TV show. You know, mm -hmm. like it's so it's like uh, it's a little bit of ambivalence. I'm ready to feel that direction again, which I'm hoping phase five will will get more into. But yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I mean, I like this. Maybe I don't know. I don't know how much I like this compared to everything else that came out in the MCU uh, this year. I mean, I guess it's I mean, I guess it's it's up. It's it's 
kind of liked it as much as I like Doctor Strange, really. The only reason I might have Doctor Strange a little bit higher is I think there's for me it was a funnier movie like i i I had a lot more laughs in doctor strange in that note fight movie is one of my favorite moments of the year Mm -hmm. like that's that was a really cool scene so i have some stuff to pull from doctor strange that i don't necessarily have when i think of wakanda forever so uh the worst one clearly is thor love and thunder though i don't Um, disagree easily one of the most um I don't know joyless experiences I've had watching uh, watching a since Thor: The Dark World maybe. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the yeah that that's the watching in an MCU movie and I was just I was stunned because Taika Waititi is has shown that he's great and maybe it's not really his fault considering how the MCU gets you know commanded by one person essentially. It's hard um, to know. It's so hard to know. He's he's also doing so much right now. He's producing so much television in in movie pro- projects. I just wonder if he has like a a split purpose uh, going on with all the stuff he's you, doing. This may not work financially for companies, but they do need to realize that giving time for projects to develop has got to be better in the long run for quality right uh maybe they don't care maybe it's maybe it's the whole uh we need to get a we need to get a bang get our bang for our buck while we while while the iron's hot type of thing going on but i don't know man it seems like the it's really caught up to the mcu on all this (laughs) stuff it's really not i mean that was that was that was really bad. And then speaking of really bad, this is the last uh, comic book movie I believe that I need to talk about is Black Adam. Um, Jesus, maybe <laughs> I, I this is definitely one of the worst movies I saw the past year. Uh, it's like it's hilarious to me that that Dwayne Johnson thought this was a product that was going to propel him into a prominent role in the DC film universe, like. I understand that that was his goal, um, uh, even going above his direct uh, bosses at Warner's to the new boss of Warner's Discovery to get Henry Cavill in the movie. Mm. Um, like, this is not a guy, I don't think, that is not heavily involved in this movie all along. I'm sure he's one of the producers. I'm sure he was looking at dailies. I'm sure he knew what this was. And let's be honest, how many movies has The Rock made that are great? Mm-hmm. how many i don't yeah. think he has a very good nose for what makes a good movie i think he likes things in a movie that make him look cool to himself and that feels like mm. what black adam is and then whenever he's not around then we have dr fate and hawkman actually trying to make a good entertaining movie uh, but black <laughs> yeah. adam keeps coming in and dumbing it all down and making it mm. stupid like mm-hmm. pierce brosnan is actually a bright spot in this film mm-hmm. um it's just that everything is overshadowed by the rock the rock mm. he's mm. brooding he's mad he has lightning fingers okay i'm done <laughs> i'm just tired of i'm just tired of comic book movies or any kind of movies really that uh that where they've buried something that's so dangerous that nobody should ever get it again and then mm. they put fucking plaques up <laughs> saying saying this is here, where it is if you don't want it thing. you you don't want it you don't want it but the, it's here if you want it you can have it it's totally fine if you want to get it um i'm tired of that man and yeah. and uh and so it's uh it's exhausting and yeah you think you're right the i think i think sometimes people get so much power in a in a in a movie or whatever and and uh just drive it into the ground and the 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 these movies follow the same path. They all look the same to me. They all mm. look the exact same. They all have the same, uh, the same villain almost a lot of times, the same thing that they're after. There's nothing new anymore to me. Um, anyway, um, I don't have anything to add. It's a terrible movie. It's, uh-huh. and I usually will defend the rock. I like it when he stays in his kind of like dumb action movie lane. I can have some fun with that stuff. Uh, but this is just uh, there's so much wrong with this movie that I'm distracted nonstop by choices mm-hmm. that are made and shots that are chosen. And it's yeah. just it's 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 a bad one. It's a bad mm-hmm. one. It's, it's a stinky one. 
I'm just going to briefly mention this because it's in the top 10 of our domestic box office, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, because it also did that whole bury something that nobody should ever have. <laughs> yeah. And then like, here's a blueprint on how to get it. If you want it. <laughs> there's a, there's a scene early on where Sonic is told that, uh, this thing is important and that nobody should ever have it. And I need you to go get it to protect it. Mm. And, and it's like, it's already protected, right? Nobody knows where it is. <laughs> Just don't tell him where it is. It's fine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, on, onward to, let's get, let's get back to some good movies. Let's get to some, some more Oscar stuff. Let's talk about finally everything, everywhere, all at once. Mm. Mm. This movie, I, I want to, I want to be back in time and be a fly on the wall as the Daniels are crafting this movie because mm -hmm. this, that I feel is as big an accomplishment as the actual finished product because I, I don't think I could ever come up with a story this complicated that has this much goofy fun and heart. It really is a miracle movie, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I hope it wins every award it's up for. Yeah. I just don't yeah. I mean, mm. I'm interested to hear your theory on how, uh, you know, how you think it, uh, it could lose. Um, because it is in my mind, the most, uh, dominant front runner we've had since Lord of the Rings, return of the King. Like wow. it is, it is sweeping everything, like mm. every single critics group, every, the, the SAG PD, you know, uh, the producers guild, the directors guild, like it's winning everything. And mm. I just, I, it's so hard for me to understand how it could, there could be enough people in this new, however, I mean, what are we at? Six, 7,000 people in the Academy now? Like they keep uh, broadening it every year. How they're, who that voting block would be that would just, you know, put Fablemans over the top or whatever. It just seems really, really interesting. I'm more, I, I, will, I will clarify. My prediction is more that they will, screw over everything everywhere all at once than it is that they will give it to fablemans i think mm. elvis and all quiet on the western front both have a shot in my mind to take that and it's just i mean there's no real there's no real theory at work here it's just that we've had a couple times in the last few years we've had an upset where a film mm -hmm. like la la land seem to win everything leading up to the oscars and then even, even, even oscars briefly, night it seemed to win <laughs> even briefly won the oscar mm -hmm. um and I am worried that we're looking at that situation again, that, that, cause Oscar voting only started recently, like a week in ago, the last I couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Nick in the chat says there are 9,500 members of the Academy now pushing 10,000 votes for these but awards. Every year, every year deadline or the rap will interview an anonymous old uh -huh. Academy voter uh -huh. yeah. who gives honest wrong. thoughts and 90% of the movies this person hasn't ever seen. Every, so we know these kinds of voters are out there. Mm -hmm. And I, I worry that there's fatigue over everything, everywhere, all at once. And well, that whole thing with the, the Andrea Riseborough voting thing really started me questioning, not that there's anything shady going on, but that motivations for voting are less than pure, I think. Uh, yeah, well, I'm sure, uh, certainly for a, a large portion, uh, that is and probably also, true. And Paris, but Parasite being the uh, the outlier, I think mm -hmm. the Academy's a little racist, um, maybe a lot. Uh, but I think, so. but I think what I'm saying is, with them continuing to add, that portion of the Academy continues to shrink. I believe, um, I so it becomes harder to do that. I think the way everything, everywhere, all at once loses is if, if there is a contingency of people who really don't want it to win, so they rank it at 10th. Because it is, uh, you know, a um, ranked system of tabulation. Right. So uh, a movie like Coda that will get a lot of number twos or number threes can actually exactly. win because mm -hmm. people are ranking the other contenders down so low. Um, yeah, so that's, and, that's and I hope I'm wrong. I'm not wishing for this. I hope everything, everywhere, all at once wins Best Picture and Best actor and supporting actors and all the all the awards yeah. i think it is certainly deserving yeah and even like stephanie Hsu and jamie lee curtis just like get co-oscars and in, in, would love that of, would I be would amazing i it's it's so interesting i would love for jamie lee to get an oscar i think that would be great 
but I actually think Stephanie Hsu is the the better perform. Like I think she's the best performance in the movie. If I'm being honest, mm. I think she's yeah. incredible in this movie. Mm. Um, she has some moments that really blow me away. Chris, she I remember has to go through. She can run the gamut. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I remember we watched this uh, for the first time together with a couple of other people on the team, and uh, walking out, I think we all were like, "What did we just see?" Like, there's this mm -hmm. real element of like, this is a movie you almost have to fall in love with over time because there's so much going on in it yeah. that that first time you don't pick up. It was only my second third viewing before i started to piece together like how intentional these universes are and like mm -hmm. what they're saying about michelle yo's character's transformation yeah. um you know and everything that she goes through and finding peace and contentment with her relationship with her daughter is encapsulated in one of these universes whether mm -hmm. it be the same sex relationship uh that's encapsulated in the hot dog fingers universe the idea of letting her daughter make her own decisions is the mm -hmm. raccoonie universe like putting her daughter on her shoulders instead of her being on her daughter's shoulders like mm -hmm. all of this stuff is is really really intentional it's it's a brilliant film it really is super smart and uh every time i watch it i love it more so yeah, yeah the uh the my first experience with this movie wasn't good it wasn't because of who i was watching it with but it was the theater that we watched it in um the auditorium that we watched it in the 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 projection was extremely dark yes it was um uh, so I, I, I was trying to see through the haze of the mm -hmm. bad projection through the, through the whole thing. Then there's all the weirdness and then there's the tired. We were all tired from sin week too. That's Correct. the other par part of the very end of sin week. Um, when this movie came out on Blu-ray, I popped, I popped this thing in because I knew we were going to send it, but I didn't know how we were going to send it. Mm -hmm. I watched it again. I was like, my God, man this is <laughs> it's amazing it's it, i was like this movie's really really good and we're gonna have to tackle it a different way but yeah multiple viewings it it doesn't even doesn't even scratch the surface how many times you have to watch this i mm -hmm. think to really really appreciate it and some people may not be able to get there on that second viewing even because there's mm -hmm. you know there's people getting beat to death with dildos in this movie so it's true um, it happens so, when you, you know, put it and, you like know, that <laughs> exactly exactly i mean that's really the like 80 percent of the movie is people getting beat by dildos so more like you know, dildos. don't sorry <laughs> right <laughs> right Continue. um i think what we've got to say though about this movie and we've already kind of said it is that hollywood needs more movies like this even if it's not like make a movie make a movie exactly like everything everywhere all at once but to be original for one for once try some things do some different things i know that we i know that they're they're really relying on all these comic book properties and things like that to, to stay afloat but we really need a breath of fresh air here and there and i guess it's all the, it's all the more stark when a movie like that comes out in the middle of all this comic book malaise that we're mm -hmm. in right now and so um this movie just blows away every every uh bit of uh anything that that came out um you know that that i mean all the all the stuff that made way more money than that is none of them are original like actually the own there's only one other movie that i can think of and we'll be talking about it but there's only one other movie i can think of that was had a, like almost an entirely original actually an entirely original concept and uh and it was it was it was not in the top 10 but it's maybe a hope for for movies and movie mm -hmm. goers yeah. that this movie i will talk about that in a minute but we've talked we've we i think i think our, our love of this movie has has shown through quite a bit um and uh yeah i yeah, i think we've already given away the ghost on this one but yeah um uh speaking of the other original one that i was thinking of nope uh mm, which also mm -hmm. came out which came out in the summer um and uh this is another one that i watched the first time not really liking all that much i, I liked it okay but then watched it the second time and then suddenly things start piecing together a little bit better um and i really really think I think this is Jordan Peele's, I mean, it's not better than get out, but it's, 
I think it's close. Actually. I agree. It's pretty close. I'm with you. I this movie yeah. continues to grow on me. Uh, I I I locked in on a theme that I wasn't sure was intentional or not pretty early on in watching this, and it worked for me in a really deep and powerful way. And I'll, I'll, I'll mention it here shortly. But I found out recently in an interview, I Jordan Peele has talked about that idea, and so it is intentionally in here. But there is this idea in this movie about how the camera uh, elevates everything, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this idea that the camera can be your savior and your downfall. It yeah. can be both the thing that destroys you and the thing that saves you. And mm -hmm. especially coming from Jordan Peele, and uh, who has been known to really... Uh, make explicit racial themes in his movies with with Get Out and us, for that matter. The idea that the camera can be a savior for the black community is a very powerful theme in a very mm -hmm. powerful thing. But it also has been a destruction for the black community as well in the way that it's been used against them and the way that the portrayals have been used. Mm -hmm. So I just I once once you lock into that, this movie really starts to click, in my opinion, and you really start to see the metaphor come out uh, of the story, which I still think is exciting and fun. It's an interesting creature story, and I, I find mm -hmm. it interesting on both levels. So yeah. I'm probably just in between my first and second viewings. Uh, to be able to 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 praise this movie like you guys, I certainly didn't dislike it, uh, but I do feel like hmm, after one viewing, it felt like the pursuit of some of those themes impacted my ability to enjoy the actual plot that was happening mm. on screen. If that makes sense, but I I do declare I do declare I need to give this another look. <clears throat> That can happen with metaphor movies, by the way, where the metaphor dominates the story in a way that becomes a little distracting. Um, it, it was just so clear to me. He had so many big things to say. Mm -hmm. I felt like they were distracting me from the actual action of the story. But again, I'll I'll, I'll revisit this after I see it. Yeah. Yeah, I think once you get in, get down with that camera metaphor and watch the movie through that lens, haha. -ha, hey. Um, I didn't mean that. <laughs> um, I did. I do now. Um, but um, but uh, once you once you get through that lens, it, everything sort of clicks into place. Even what seems to be like a totally out of place moment in the movie, where they're just well, let's show what happened on that '90s sitcom back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, this is really well done. But it seems like a completely different movie to me. So I don't understand what what why this is being shown. Once you start looking at it through that sort of that uh you know that camera eye then you uh you, then it becomes a little bit better it became better for me and like i said now i'm starting to think it's like on par with get out and i love get out so mm, yeah uh, i'm gonna have to watch nope again probably even even more in the future just because it's it's one of those type of movies i think jordan peele just constantly constantly thinks about what i think uh, he's not one, he's one of those guys where every detail it matters so yep. it's mm -hmm. it's it's fun it's fun to watch anything that he makes agree um all right uh continuing on the oscar train a movie that completely surprised me mainly because i'd never heard of it before and then some friend a friend of mine was like hey you want to see this movie i was like i ah, never heard of it the banshees of inisherin mm. um I had not seen a trailer, had not heard of the movie, anything. But usually, like, when my buddy says, hey, you want to watch this? It's supposed to be good. I trust it. And my God, man, this is clearly in my top five. <laughs> um, I uh, I love the Banshees of Anna Sharon. Uh, and uh, I did some some great performances in this. Obviously, they've they've uh, Carrie Condon is is in the is in the conversation. Uh, uh, but um but uh, yeah, it's such an unusual film uh, where you have two buddies who aren't buddies anymore. And the one buddy doesn't want to tell the other buddy why. And it's, <laughs> it starts the whole plot of this movie. Yeah. Um, what did you guys think of this? Uh, I still think I like in Bruges better. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a performance piece, and I think everybody shines. I struggled a little bit to connect on a personal level, um, but it's a, 
an acting masterclass, and it's mm -hmm. clear that these guys should only make movies with each other for the rest of their lives because <laughs> they have a, a really unique uh, magnetic chemistry. Um, <clears throat> I really liked it. Uh, this is one of a, f uh, a couple movies this year in the awards race that I, I, I have a harder time parsing my feelings on because I saw them in a packed crowd at a film festival, right? I got mm. a chance to go to, oh, what's the, I'm totally the um, Fantastic Fest uh, mm -hmm. last spring and Banshees was one of the ones they were showing. Martin McDonough was there, like there was a conversation afterwards. So like, I know everything I saw there is elevated in my mind. Like, and so parsing through that sometimes can be a little bit tough, but I love this movie. And I think for me, thematically, the idea of uh, this is a new way to say war is hell. This is a creative, mm. different way to mm. say that war is silly, it's dumb, and yeah. like there's because everything about the these these two friends don't have to be going this hard, but it just escalates and it just becomes this thing that is unredeemable. And in the fact that you know they have that conversation while looking at the actual war that's happening, you know, across the the bay or whatever is certainly intentional and mm. and part of that theme that that you know brings home why do we fight and why do we you know uh, choose violence and those kind of things. Um, so I liked all of that in addition to, uh, I thought, the great performances. This movie is also hilarious. It's mm -hmm. one of the funniest movies of the year. That's McDonough. He's he's so yeah. uh, good at that stuff. Um, so, yeah, one of the best scripts, one of the best performance movies. This is, this is uh, great, great stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, now I want to talk about a theme that happened quite a bit this year, and that is the Eat the Rich uh, theme mm -hmm. that – uh, Yes, yes. Uh, I will start with, since we're talking about eating, let's talk about the menu, mm -hmm. um, uh, which is uh, uh, is an unusual film in its own right. Um, uh, the trailer sort of made this feel like it was going to be, you know, a most dangerous game type of movie or, mm. or like recently The Hunt. Um, mm. One of those kind of things. Um, uh, but... Uh, uh, it's it, there's this uh i love i love i i really like this movie quite a bit uh what did you guys what did you guys think of the menu i'm oh, i was only able to watch it because of aaron's persistence uh, <laughs> in recommending it to the point where and i think this was an act of love he gave me a time stamp for when a gun suicide occurs in the mm -hmm. film and described what happens right before it so that i could look away for 30 seconds or fast forward um and I loved it. I loved it. Uh, this mm -hmm. is one of the best movies of the year for me. I think it does click for me um, an extra level because I like fine foods and shows about cooking fine foods. And this is sort of a send up of that. This is sort of a chef who's realized this is all stupid and I don't mm -hmm. want to do it anymore. And in real life, there was a chef this year at the most famous restaurant in the world somewhere in Europe who said, ah, we're going to, we're going to shut down. Um, it's considered the most innovative kitchen in the world. And he's just tired of it. He's like, fine dining is not sustainable. And we overwork ourselves, uh, to get this done. And the menu has a lot of this kind of themes in, I don't know if this guy in real life was a consultant or what, but it feels like the journey is very similar. I liked all the food stuff. Um, and, uh, Nicholas Holt, just continues to wow me every time out i don't think i've seen a bad performance from him yet when i first saw him i think was like the x-men movies where he's playing beast and he's not given much to do there uh but you know mad max and the favorite and this this dude's got range man and mm -hmm. uh, he's pitch perfect in this movie the over yeah. the top overly giddy uh to experience this thing god i love this movie so much and uh that's all i have to say <clears throat> Uh, it's another Fantastic Fest movie for me, so I'll mention that as well. Saw it at Fantastic Fest with a you know big crowd and just loved it so much. It was my favorite movie of the festival. Um, I I think it's it's a movie that's it's asking us to realize we are often high on our own supply. You mm -hmm. know, like the the no matter what, whether it's fine dining, whether it's conversation about movies, what whatever your fandom is, right? Whatever your fandom is, that that many times we can elevate it above you know what what it really is 
Um, and I think that's, that's the whole cheeseburger element. Like all of that is, you know, uh, to say that I just think this movie is, uh, really well structured and really funny. Um, some, some of the funniest subtitling I've ever seen in a movie. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Tyler's BS got the biggest laugh <laughs> in the crowd and it was a subtitle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's so like, it's just, it's one of those movies. that's just enjoyable to watch. It's a, a lot of fun and the interesting thing to say too, because it's such a dark comedy, but it is enjoyable to watch just because there's so much laughter um and it's also just right it's just true everything this movie is saying feels right to me um and i uh i enjoyed that about the nicholas holt performance i did also want to mention this it is one of those beautiful moments in a movie where a negative is turned into a positive because there's information you didn't know mm. i did not think nicholas holt's performance was that good i wasn't understanding it then some information is revealed later in the movie and mm. i was like Oh, his performance is genius. Like, you know, like in hindsight, yeah. like it's really good. Uh, and I, I love it when that can happen. So I enjoyed that too. Um, further along in this is a uh, glass onion, uh, that, uh, the, the new Ryan Johnson knives out, uh, mystery, uh, and, uh, uh, Aaron, take it away on this one. Tell me what you thought about Glass Onion. Um, I I am fine with Ryan Johnson making a Benoit Blanc mystery every two years. Like I just mm -hmm. I want to see them all. I I think he is clearly in love with this genre and clearly understand uh, understands the things that make it interesting. He's doing some kind of unique things in the murder mystery genre in this one that I liked. Um, I think as I've watched this movie, uh, you know, a second and third time. The things I'm picking up on is how honestly he plays the the uh, the plot of this movie. There are things I pick up on where I'm like, that was in plain sight, and I just missed it the first time mm. I watched it. Mm -hmm. He never cheats things. He doesn't cut the camera away during things that will be questioned later. You have an opportunity to see exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but because of maybe clever uh, distraction, sleight of hand, those kind of things, you don't always pick up on it. Um, there is a moment in the early part of the movie, uh, I don't know how spoilery I want to be, but where a character calls somebody by a name that we don't know them by yet. Mm -hmm. And it's not until the second part of the movie that we understand what that was, if we even noticed it. So like, mm -hmm. there's all these beautiful, like honest clues to this murder mystery that I really like. I also think he really understands how a murder mystery has to have unique individual characters that are mm -hmm. defined by unique individual things. Uh, and that makes it uh, a lot of fun uh, to watch as well. So I think it's a really fun cast. I think it has some fun cameos. Uh, Benoit, Blanc, Benoit Blanc is one of my f favorite new characters of the last decade. I just, I yeah. love watching Daniel Craig do this character. So I had a really good time. I really like Glass yeah. Onion. Yeah. And I liked it. And I, and I, I've, said that i need to watch it again because i didn't i didn't have the same it didn't have the same resonance with me that mm -hmm. knives out did uh uh when i first watched that movie and then ended up watching it like five more times afterwards like you know, pretty quickly um uh but i'm looking forward to looking uh to watching glass onion again because of all the things that you just mentioned on this mm -hmm. uh but uh but yeah i i i, I did i did enjoy this um uh, but uh I, again i need to see it um i need to see it again um and it's, then it's also uh, just one more thing it's also a very very uh important message at this very moment in time the idea of what a glass onion is that you can see the center clearly there's not a lot of mystery and yet you're still <laughs> peeling back the layers like yeah. everything about this movie plays into this this theme from the the puzzle box and the way that the different characters handle the puzzle box the way that represents how the different characters handle stuff that happens at the end uh from the fact of that everything is maybe maybe simpler than it appears like that theme is is a really interesting one that plays through the movie i just i think ryan johnson and really smart and another one of those directors that really pays attention to the details which is a lot of fun so yeah yeah for certain uh and then triangle of sadness which is the uh the big oscar movie out of the these three uh jeremy i know you have thoughts about triangle <laughs> of sadness i i i i think i love what this movie was going for more mm -hmm. than i enjoyed the movie i was certainly captivated all the way through i i 
put my hands over my face as much as possible during the 20 minutes of violent puking. Um, yes. There's there's a lot of really interesting stuff to chew on here. And my favorite scene is the over the ship radio philosophical conversation about communism and capitalism. <laughs> and um, and it, they're both drunk, but and everyone else who's going through this eventual shipwreck it has to listen while they're terrified to these two drunk guys discussing like philosophy um uh, you know i just feel like when the movie ends it's making some statement that i simply don't get and if the ending made a little more sense to me then i might have more of a high opinion of the stuff that preceded it uh but i i just i don't know that it sticks the landing but it feels like it thinks it sticks the landing. And that's just weird to me. So there you go. It was the uh, uh, the third uh, Fantastic Fest movie. Uh, and uh, Ian and I were uh, at these movies together. And I looked at him as soon as this movie was over. And I said, I think I love everything about that movie except the ending. <laughs> and Ian loved the ending. And he proceeded to tell me what he thought the ending was about. I just don't know that this movie needs an ambivalent ending. I right. feel like this movie is saying something pretty clear that I don't know how that ending gives us anything more than, than we already have or need for what I think this movie may be saying. Um, and which is something that I really like, which is this idea that, uh, you have these political cultural ph uh, philosophies that you believe in. And at the end of the day, power corrupts, no matter what the system is, I believe that's what this, this movie is saying. Um, but I don't know why we need the, you know, the open ending. If it is an open ending, Ian doesn't think it is an open ending. He thinks it's very clear what's happening in the ending. I, I think that's what does he are you think guys? is happening. What's that? What does he think is happening? Well, with I can't I can't really say that without spoiling it for some people. So oh, then don't um, do that. Yeah, but, but right. yeah. Well, I'll just talk to you. Are you talking Ian about the last shot or the yes, ending? I am the last oh, shot. I'm talking about like, the last shot. Yeah, the last okay. shot. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, the mo the movie doesn't make clear if an action was taken or not with mm -hmm. its last shot. It just. But again, Ian does believe it makes clear what happened. So, hmm. um, so yeah, I'm I'm of two minds. I uh, I really did like this movie a lot. Um, I especially like. Well, I mean, the the third act has got a lot of, uh, of the what's on its mind mm -hmm. uh, is what is what uh, comes out. But in the second act of this movie, I just love the fact that the 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 cruise ship has set their rules basically against themselves immediately because they say whatever they want, you, you give, it, give to it to them. them. Yeah. And then when it actually contradicts their own rules, that's where they run into these problems. And, uh, the, it leads to that great moment where one of the workers is walking by one of those pools and one of the rich people is like, come into the pool with me. And they're like, well, I'm not supposed to go in the pool. It's like, come on, you got to get in the pool. And they're like, I'm not supposed to. And by the end of it, this girl is saying, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> like trying to get into the, in her answer and getting to the pool mm -hmm. and like the, just all the different problems that arise from that philosophy. Just think about it think about not giving yourself boundaries in that situation, especially in a cruise ship that's about to run into an awful storm and all this other stuff. Uh, I really, really, really enjoyed it. In fact, I will definitely watch triangle of sadness, uh, multiple times because I love how it's shot. I love how it's presented. Uh, and, uh, this was a surprise for me, even though you guys, you and Ian both, uh, recommended it to me uh mm -hmm. after you guys had seen it i uh was um i was still surprised at how much i enjoyed the yeah. movie ultimately uh people um, don't talk about people don't talk about that first act enough in my opinion i think the first act is really good too. i love that conversation at, at dinner i think it's yeah it's really interesting and um it's and valuable, very so. interesting it's it's something that we go through every day right with mm -hmm. with communicating to people uh and uh, where you have, where, where his thought is, you said that you were going to pay for the dinner the next time we paid for the dinner. Then mm -hmm. she makes it about money, which is what it's not about right at all. 
And he's like, it's not about, and she suddenly, you know, starts arguing about money when it's really about the fact that she said mm -hmm. that she'd pay and that she's forgotten conveniently that she was going to pay mm -hmm. for it the next time. And you find out that they find out the truths about themselves in that whole conversation, even though they're clearly talking past each other for the <laughs> longest time. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I, 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 uh, yeah, that first act is, is probably underrated and all of that. Um, uh, let's see, let's go to, uh, let's, let's lightly touch on some box office movies. We don't need to talk about them very much. I thought Jurassic world dominion was maybe the worst movie of the year. Uh, and that's mm. saying something with black Adam out there. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Dr Jurassic world dominion commits one of the biggest sins of any kind of franchise, which is, Eh, you don't like dinosaurs, do you? Let's not put dinosaurs in it then. You're tired of the dinosaurs, right? And it's like, no, there's a six motherfucking movies with dinosaurs. We aren't tired of dinosaurs. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? And so they make it about these giant fucking insects and everything. And it's like, no, guys, this is what, why are, where are we at this point? Apparently, I've been told the uh the whatever the director's cut of this movie is way better i don't know if i'm interested enough to watch uh because that's how bad i thought dominion was um, i haven't seen a single person on any social media that i peruse say a positive thing about this movie mm -hmm. and that's i've seen people say positive things about black adam um, because the only positive thing about this movie are are things that the movie then ruins like it is a positive that you got the whole gang back together that's fun i like that i like that that our original people are all here but you ruin it by not giving them anything to do and by making them like side quest peoples like it's mm -hmm. just it's it's the mo the movie is to me a conglomeration of trying to force pieces into a puzzle that that they're not meant for and so it's just trying to do all this stuff that just instead of starting with an interesting story and then building around it what you need uh it clearly starts with the idea that you know um we're getting these people into this thing and how can we figure it out so yeah um, and then I'm mentioning this only because it was in the top 10 and you won't believe that it was in the top 10 <laughs> when you're like, you're going to be like, really? Uh, minions, the rise of Gru, which neither Jeremy or I saw, uh, Aaron saw it. Uh, tell me what you thought about the rise of Gru, Aaron. Uh, Aaron saw it with uh, several tuxedoed teenagers, uh, mm. who, because that mm. was the TikTok trend. Half the reason this is in the top 10 is because of the, uh, the minions trend, um, that, uh, that happened. Uh, this, I look, it's the, it's the minions. Um, the first despicable me movie is pretty good. Uh, the rest of them are just kind of derivative, uh, and this mm -hmm. this follows that. I mean, I mean, if you if you if you want to laugh at yellow butts, you can laugh at yellow butts. There's some in here, mm -hmm. so yeah. And that rounds out the top ten. Not one original movie hit the top ten. The closest Amazing. the closest one was Nope. It was 14th. This we're talking domestic box office mm -hmm. here. We're not talking more worldwide. Um, I think worldwide there were two that no actually. I was looking at some of the worldwide. There was one that was like, I think a Chinese product, but it was mm -hmm. a sequel too. <laughs> so I was like, Jesus Christ, man, even the movies we don't get that make the top 10 worldwide are sequels. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, then let's see, what else do we have here? Okay. Let's talk about some animation here. Okay. Um, since we just got into the rise of Gru and everything, let's talk about, uh, a failure, but Aaron, you may want to defend mm. Lightyear. Oh, you no. may want to defend no. Lightyear. No, no defending of Lightyear. Mm. No, I, I mean, like how we politicized Lightyear when it came out. Like it, so ridiculous. like it was, like it was. Oh, we didn't put Tim Allen in the movie. No, <laughs> the movie is not good. And uh, and so anyway, what did you think about Lightyear? Uh, yeah, it pains me to say uh, that it's that it's not good, but it's it's just it's it's such a misunderstanding of everything that we like about the 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 universe and the character and the concept is just so weird and mishandled the uh, like and also hard to understand for a lot of people like the fact that this was the movie that the toys that Andy bought were based on um doesn't make any sense with the movie we're given 
doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense with the movie we're given. So if you're going to do that concept, at least have some fun with what a, you know, like campy spaceman movie from the early 90s might have looked like. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like instead yeah. of this thing. So um, there are moments I enjoy. I mean, there are smart people working, you know, on this movie that do some fun stuff. But overall, it's just it's a ill-considered movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was shocked at how unlikable this movie was mm-hmm. like i like normally pixar at least put some kind of care and even the cars movies are not you know as bad as this and i know that you're you you will defend cars movies but like um i'll defend cars <laughs> one but not yeah, cars two okay good good <laughs> because the other two you can't defend um uh but no um uh i i was i was shocked at how how this it used to be when you had a Pixar list, like they were all great and it was Mm -hmm. hard to like, it was hard to like stack them onto each other, which one would be in your top five. Right. Yeah. Because they were so, so good. And now we have, we have a few examples at this point now. I mean, that's only a natural, I guess, if you're going to make so many movies, you're going to eventually get there. But now we've got several that you can just go ahead and put at the bottom of the list right Mm -hmm. away and not even worry about it. And, uh, and it's amazing how, little care seemed to have gone into light here um uh a movie that both of you have talked about i have not seen the sea beast Ooh, Ooh. yeah what do you think of sea beast jeremy uh the sea beast is delightful uh i believe a lot of the same team that made uh klaus uh, a netflix mm-hmm. christmas movie uh is on this film maybe even the director uh, and that's why we watched sea beast because my wife really loves klaus uh and uh yeah it was a pretty original um adventure about taming and fighting sea beasts but it's some of the most realistic animation in parts that i have ever seen in my life um which is it feels weird that netflix would put out a movie like that because they seem to enjoy cutting corners i don't know not on budget i guess anyway sea beast is beautiful and delightful fun little movie that probably shouldn't win best picture or anything but there you go uh the director of sea beast also directed big hero six uh as oh, wow. well so it's good pedigree yeah definitely good pedigree it's very entertaining it's absolutely how to train your kraken like it is it is you know <laughs> the, the blueprint is there uh but it's a lot of fun to watch and it takes its world and characters seriously um and gives them uh real stuff to do so i i I really enjoyed the sea beast it's one of the best animated movies of the year for sure Mm. the front runner for best animated feature is guillermo del toro's pinocchio Mm. uh which uh i i love the animation of this movie yeah um and i think it's sort of set a new standard for pinocchio movies if there's a standard that we need to live by (laughs) um uh when you set out to remake something this is how i feel like you should do it uh i just i don't know why this movie of all the ones that are in the category is the one that everybody wants to win or seems to be the favorite to win i mean is it too simple to say that that netflix is doing a good job of promoting it like they 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 mm-hmm. are really going hard at the the like they invited us in the cca out to an event to see like all the uh, the stop motion sets, which was really cool, really cool experience uh, at the uh, the new Academy Museum um, uh, that that was able to to see. Um, it's I think it's the technical achievement. I think the Academy also loves Guillermo del Toro. Like I it's just do. he's so likable, um, and it's a good it's a really good movie. It puts the focus honestly on what the focus of the story of Pinocchio always should have been, which is Geppetto. Like it is a story about how Geppetto deals with death. Like that's the mm-hmm. actual story, um, and it's willing to be uh, real about that and dark about that. Um, it's a it's a really good movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think yeah. Again, I think it's one of the, I think it's one of the best visual accomplishments I've ever seen. Like I don't think there's a stop motion movie I've ever seen that has this level of attention to detail and mm-hmm. is this gorgeous. Uh, I just, you know, I struggle to emotionally connect to it, um, but sure. I did really enjoy it. <clears throat> I remember yeah. them talking about uh, that level of detail, Jeremy, that they wanted to animate mistakes into the stop motion because a lot of times with animation or stop motion, you don't want to spend extra frames 
on just human things like somebody dropping a pencil or a door not shutting all the way or those mm. kind of things. But they were deliberate about we're going to include things that happen in real life that um, that make give it that kind of life. So um, when you watch it with that eye, it's really interesting, all the little different mistakes that happen um, by the characters in the movie. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a non sequitur, but there's a Native American tradition uh, in some tribes of intentionally sewing a mistake into uh, a piece of clothing or a blanket or what have you. And I think it, I'm talking out of my ass here, I think it has to do with leaving a way for the spirits of your ancestors to either come back or speak to you or what have you. Um, but uh, when I was reading about it, I remember thinking um, <clears throat> there's kind of a beauty to that. Um, you know, perfection is kind of false feeling. Mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. I, I didn't know that about Pinocchio. That's interesting. It also came in the year in which another Pinocchio came out from Disney <laughs> doing the remake with Tom Hanks and everything. So uh, not to be confused with that Pinocchio. I haven't, I didn't see that other Pinocchio, but I did see the Sims video for it. And I was like, I'm glad I didn't see that. Glad I didn't see that movie. Uh, it's um, terrible. The movie that I wish would be higher on the animation uh, list as far as possibly winning is Marcel the Shell with Shoes on. Yes. Um, this movie is a delight. It's yes. uh, it's a uh, fake documentary style the with uh, this cute shell voiced by Jenny Slate um, and uh, about a, basically a guy who checks into an Airbnb and finds the shell uh, uh, roving around in a tennis ball uh, all throughout and then just asking questions about his life and uh, – uh, it's, it's got a lot of inventiveness to it. It's original. It's fun. It's funny. It's got touching moments in it. Um, I, in a, in a, in another world, I think this one is probably the front runner, but it's, it's going to probably get beat by the Pinocchio movie. But, mm. uh, what did you think? Aaron. I love it. I Marcel, first time I saw it, I was like that. I, I mean, I cried. I, it's a very uh, interestingly emotional movie. Mm -hmm. I find it. I also find it interesting how it fits into best animated film because yeah, that's true. A lot of the screen is just the real world. Uh, mm -hmm. so it's, it's, I, you know, I wonder how they make those distinctions sometimes, uh, and a lot of the actors are just real world actors, but I guess there's enough stop motion animation or different types mm. of animation. Yeah. Um, that, that it includes, and I'm glad it does because I, I want it to have as much attention as, as possible. Um, I think Jenny Slate is really deep and as funny as she is, she's, she has, uh, made some really interesting material that makes me think, and I did not expect to go see a shell movie that made me think as deeply as, as this one did. So, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's really good. Yeah. I wasn't expecting this to be as, as good as it was. Um, and, uh, totally blown away by it. Uh, just saw it over the weekend. So I'm, I'm, I was really happy with it. The only other, um, animation animated movie I see on this list of movies that we were going to talk about is Chippendale rescue Rangers, uh, which Aaron saw, I thought Jeremy saw this too, but it shows that he, it doesn't show up as you have seeing it, Jeremy, but, Did you uh, watch the this, Chippendale Jeremy? Chippendale. Yeah, Chippendale Rescue Rangers. No, and I, I mean, I saw some Chippendale shit back in the day when I was a kid. I don't think this is that. Was so. there some other animated thing that came out over the past year that was uh, an existing property that people f fell in love with that wasn't Chippendale? I, I swear Jeremy uh, recommended one of them, but uh doesn't matter. It's neither here nor there. Aaron, what did mm -hmm. you think of Chippendale? Whatever the case, this is the Lonely Island guys doing a Chippendale movie, and it is hilarious. And mm. it's like... It's very much the um, it's Roger Rabbit that has all the different IP and uh, different stuff in it, right? That's like a mix of animation and live action and that kind of stuff. It's that feel. Like there's a, there's like a Gumby type character. Like anything you've seen in animation, this world treats it treats it as if those are sentient beings in our actual world. Mm -hmm. So they just they just walk around as animated beings. Or you know, for instance, one of the jokes is that you know uh, old school animated uh, creatures will uh, go get CG surgery, uh, and so they will then become uh, you know CG. Uh, I did see this movie and recommend it, and then it just completely <laughs> went out of my head. <laughs> 
Um, but I had I had a really good time with it. The Lonely Island guys are hilarious, and there's a there's a lot of fun to be had at this one. So yeah, I've seen wow, it a couple sorry, times and enjoyed. Sorry it. there, your memory was correct, Chris. I'm, mine was not. That's all right. There's a there's a, a number of million things that come out in a given year, and it could have been some other thing that I was thinking of. Um, th- there's uh, been discussion about turning red and Puss in Boots. We're not really going to talk about those here today. We've got too many to go through, but maybe Aaron, you got just something quickly. To say. I'll say they're both great, and Puss in Boots is surprisingly amazing. Um, it's yeah. it's really good. It's, it's one of the best mm-hmm. most one of the best reviewed films of the entire year. So it's really good. Really, yeah, yeah. really. Puss in Boots. Huh. Yep. The last Puss wish. Boots, yep. The last wish. Yep. Um, okay. Um, all right. If this is okay with you guys, I think a couple more Oscar, maybe nominees. We'll talk a little bit more in length about, but I'm going to start running down sure. the we'll list get into the speed, speed round, trying to, trying to get into the speed of all this, uh, this here, um, uh, tar Kate Blanchett is amazing. That's all mm-hmm. I really have to say about tar. Tar <laughs> is a really well, well-made movie, but Kate Blanchett is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's worth a watch for her performance. Uh, alone. Um, I am really excited to watch it again. I haven't watched it since I read an article about uh, a possible reading of the movie that never occurred to me um, Mm -hmm. about a a, a literal haunting that this movie is a literal ghost story. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, I'm excited to watch it through that that lens. That's uh, interesting to me. Yeah. Uh, The Whale. I think Brendan Fraser is definitely getting the proper um, accolades for this performance in this movie. It got some controversy. I'm not sure what the, I don't, I actually didn't read about the controversy. Uh, What was that all about? Uh, Do you, anybody know? There, there is some controversy from uh, the boy, and I, I apologize if I use the wrong wording. Uh, I can, I could be considered a part of this community, the overweight community. Um, mm-hmm. That the way that it handles obesity is pretty negative and pretty mm. um, judgmental. Uh, mm-hmm. So that I think is the the controversy there. So. I, I mean, I don't know, uh, but uh, Brendan Fraser is great in it, and I thought this movie was way better than I was expecting when I when I came in to watch it. So uh, I didn't vibe uh, with it very well, but I, Brendan Fraser is is really really good. I really hope sure. we're in for a Brendan Fraser Zance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think we might be after actually after this. Uh, Living, which is the uh, remake of Akiru that came out, that's got Bill Nye as a uh, as a as an Oscar nomination in this. I really loved living. Um, Good. Uh, you have the, uh, uh, the basis of Akiru on this. Akiru is really great. Of course. I think they actually just credit the original screenwriter on this. I don't think they even give a, they may not even give a credit to another screenwriter on that movie. I'm not sure. Uh, but, uh, I thought living was good. I thought Bill Nye is awesome. And it, uh, talking about, you know, um, uh, sort of uh, work working in a job where you're in a bureaucracy and you have to keep on like you know handing files off and passing files off and no there's no consequences to you passing off files to anybody and never getting anything done and and uh so on but i, I thought bill nye is really great he's not he's not in any sort of contention to win in that category but i thought he was great in it uh women I second talking. all of that yep yep okay good um uh, women talking, which uh, Jeremy and I both recommended in last week's episode, uh, we both loved that uh, quite a bit. Aaron, what did you think? Oh, I love it. Uh, it's in my top five of the year. Uh, I think it's incredible performances. Um, I hope it wins best screenplay. I think it deserves mm. it. I think it's it's a really incredible screenplay. Yeah, very thoughtful screenplay. Mm-hmm. Um, After Sun, which I uh, recommended recently. Um, uh, I, this is a movie that I, I wasn't quite sure about all the way through until at the end, I was forced to consider everything that I just saw and realized what a, what a beautiful movie that is. Um, uh, so I, I really liked after sun. what do you think, Aaron? I agree with that. It, I, this movie had me guess. It's so weird that a movie like this had me guessing all the way through. There's something mm-hmm. about the way that it's made. There's almost like an ominous feeling feeling to the construction of this movie where Mm -hmm. you're always thinking what shoe is going to drop and when and by the end you get to a place where you understand things that you didn't understand and um yeah it's a really beautiful movie it really is um i've i'm put to leslie on here just to have the discussion (laughs) about the 
the uh, the Oscar process, how she got, how Andrea Riseborough basically got campaigned into a nomination uh, mm-hmm. on that, and and we we always discuss who gets snubbed uh, in a year like this and everything, and you know Daniel Deadweiler is definitely one of those that mm-hmm. got snubbed. If you watch Till, I don't know if you can say who's better than the other, but to me it just sounds like you should just expand the category. And I know that you're, I know that you're wanting to keep the Oscar telecast short, but I've always considered uh, making the Oscar telecast short, appealing to people who don't like movies as much as we do. Thank you. Yes. Start Um, it earlier and let it go seven hours. If it needs make it like a sporting events, nobody talks about the Super Bowl being five hours long because the people who love football will watch it. Yeah. So, and, and it was, I mean, and just as an aside, it's the same thing that they're doing with baseball, which I'm just like, okay, maybe the pitch clock will be good. I don't know. But, (laughs) uh, but, uh, but, uh, you know, just, just expand the category for God's sake. That's all. I I mean, if you you would never have like snubs like that, if it wasn't for that type of thing, Mm -hmm. um, I just I watched this movie this morning, Argentina, nineteen eighty five, which good, is a, right? which is the best entered. Oh, it's so good! <laughs> yeah, it is. It's probably it's probably if it wasn't for All Quiet on the Western Front, it would be the front runner for best international film. Mm-hmm. Uh, the this movie's great. If you love like you know the you know justice movies, basically like like courtroom justice, such, yeah, courtroom justice and movies that. Uh, movies that like uh have such a complex political situation like how do you f- solve this problem uh and i i just love how this is is laid out i i think argentina 1985 might be a movie that i big recommend soon mm. that's mm. how good that's how good it is and yes it's it was just recently in my it's just recently in my mind it's got recency bias but out of all the movies i saw this past weekend which was a lot uh was one of my favorite ones that i saw it's so good uh blonde i think we're mentioning blonde because of how horrible it was (laughs) and and i'm surprised even though i love anna de armas to pieces i i hated this movie i think we all hated it right i'm surprised she made this movie like Mm -hmm. i understand the filmmaker has a history of making edgier type you know, not mainstream take kind of movies. It's just, I don't, I mean, maybe she connects to Marilyn on some sort of a spiritual level and wanted to try and, I do think the movie shows, um, and this is based on a fictional work, so this largely fictional movie, but I do think it shows how uh, we kind of, society at that time just took her person and threw it in a closet and shut the door and just made her, what we wanted her to be Mm -hmm. um but no i did not enjoy this movie at all Um, it's just so it's so tone deaf to the fact that it's kind of doing the same thing it's taking task other people for doing doing to anna de armas what yes yes Yes. it's so (laughs) weird it's so weird i like how do you not see that yeah i think the guy just likes this stuff (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this movie is this movie is icky, and I'm very shocked it got an Oscar nomination. Even though Anna Diarmas pulled mm-hmm. like does the best she can with that, uh, all that breathes, which is what Jeremy recommended, I believe last week. Uh, mm-hmm. I watched this as well. Another great HBO documentary, um, and a movie that sort of makes you like down on the earth, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I do think. That's what I was trying to say when I was recommending it is that it sort of forced me to reconsider my place in history and the world and how important that is. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm still wrestling with the movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought it was great. Uh, uh, like you guys did. Um, uh, it just, it just, that's the type of movie. It reminded me of that, that, uh, that cat documentary that came out a couple of years ago where the cats were getting, moved out of their cities because the city was developing and mm. and and uh like how, who who's gonna save the cats well the answer the movie comes up with is no one no <laughs> one's gonna have to save these stray cats that yep. are everywhere uh rrr which is i i when i gave uh aaron my top five for the list it was in there i don't know if mm-hmm. it will be there now but it would it's certainly a strong contender 
this is the mo one of the most if it wasn't for everything everywhere all at once this would be the most bonkers movie of the year probably mm. uh like big action scenes hilarious like great musical numbers it's got everything you want in a movie really it's when it, insane when, when it hits not to not to in the middle and that whole dance scene happens i was just i was just i was on the floor i was i was mm -hmm. in i was dead i would like just whatever <laughs> you're gonna show me just show me because this is the most amazing thing i've ever seen like yeah um i, I cannot believe the audacity this movie has mm -hmm. uh and that that audacity works like it's just yes. it's a mind-blowing uh movie watching experience it really is oh what it's on my list. Movie. It's very high on my list, but it's on a separate side list of movies over three hours long that I have to wait <laughs> yeah. differently than the normal. This true. movie does not feel three hours, afternoon. though. <laughs> it doesn't. It really doesn't. I had to carve out an afternoon, but it does not feel like. Uh, I believe you. I believe you. Oh so, yeah. And you'll sure. be in right uh, from the beginning. Like it. It does not waste any time. Like pulling you in. So yeah. Uh, we can talk about X and Pearl together. I liked Pearl better than X, uh, mm. but uh, but uh, and talk about a performance that that got snubbed was Mia Jeez. Goth in Pearl. That monologue um, at the end is incredible. It really is, and then the fact that she holds that expression during the yeah. credits uh, at the end is amazing too. Um, uh, X, I did not really like when I first watched it. And then I watched it again and I really got down. I like really dug it the second time I watched it. Um, I think you have an idea of what a movie is when you first watch it. And if it doesn't get to those expectations, just like we've always talked about, like we've had, we have expectations in movies and they don't meet them then we don't like it. And I saw it again and I was like, oh, okay, I get where we're going for here. I like that. But Pearl just a tour de force Mia goth performance and i loved the loved it to pieces what do you guys think of those movies i like pearl better than x um and i like them both for the exploration of uh, sexual repression which i like our, our culture has a lot of things to wrestle with i don't mm -hmm. think we've begun to wrestle with how sexually repressed our culture is and how that impacts us as human beings um yeah and this this movie is willing to go there and it goes there in ridiculous ways you know whatever but um i think it understands what it's saying and that's uh i appreciated that especially about pearl so mm -hmm. i really liked x and then i saw pearl and i like pearl more than x and then i saw x again and i like x more than pearl <laughs> um, there's there's something i'm not even a big horror guy and honestly this movie to me is more about the sexual repression than it is about the horror um mm -hmm. and i just I think it's a fascinating look I, like you you sell this movie to the public on it's a horror movie taking place uh, on a porn shoot i think but it's mm -hmm. it's not it's got a lot more to say than that um and i love the yeah. dynamic where they go from explaining to jenna ortega why it's different for his girlfriend to sleep with the porn star when there's a camera on the camera makes yeah. all the difference and then she goes I want to be in a scene and yeah. everybody reacts differently now that she's interested she goes from repressed right. to interested and that causes ripple effects uh i love them both but i slightly edge x right now <clears throat> and god what a year for jenna ortega right Can't, i mean just like to, to the common person like me had never heard of jenna ortega before to now she's like like a superstar like scream x and wednesday all in one year and um, fall out <clears throat> yeah exactly so yeah. yeah what a what a great year for her uh barbarian which is a polarizing horror movie i really liked it a lot uh but uh i don't know what did you think of it aaron i hated it i hated, <laughs> hated it I, ha I hated it so much yep. uh <laughs> yep just not my jam um, just not my jam yeah, uh the the scene where justin long is making measurements of the base hilarious uh, is is one of the best scenes of the year uh, i agree i agree but but yeah i i know where you're going with on barbarian i really liked it though um decision to leave another big oscar snub i think um uh this movie was i mean ha is it's it's really good what did you think about decision to leave aaron uh, this was a Fantastic Fest movie, um, yeah. and it was an interesting one because he was there as well, and he, he the first thing he said was, 
Uh, I think I may have entered my movie into the wrong festival. <laughs> he's not. He's not all wrong. He's not all wrong. Yeah. But um, but it is uh, as for somebody like myself who loves Hitchcock as much as I do, it's hard not to like this movie. It is mm -hmm. very Vertigo. There's so much yeah. Vertigo in this movie. Very much um, so. And and he has said as much. Uh, that mm -hmm. is a conscious decision. Um, and so I did enjoy it. Uh, it. it I didn't love love it, but I did enjoy it. It's all it's one of the, it's one of those movies where it's got one of the more unforgettable endings of the year too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I yeah I, um, I I really enjoyed it. Uh, Till uh, which is we're talking about. I wanted to talk about because of uh, Daniel Deadweiler's performance <sighs> on this, uh, which so was. Good. Uh, hugely snubbed and of course she had a pretty big year too station uh third was well, station 11 mm -hmm. uh that came out was still like like in its uh it's still in its run i think at the beginning of 2022 correct uh she had a great great uh year herself i mean at the very least she raised her profile uh you know till i don't i don't know what kind of what it did box office wise or whatever I don't think it did anything. It wasn't really pushed that much. So it, I think there's a, uh, she may have been excluded by the fact that very few people saw the movie, but, uh, if you're, if you ever want to, uh, delve into the story of Emmett Till, it's well worth, uh, uh, looking at. It's a horrifying story. Um, and, uh, what the actions that took place in Till or were, were something that, I don't think very many people or nobody had ever uh, undertaken before to try to get that story out there, um, uh, to try to get people to understand what kind of violence was going on with black people in the South, especially Mississippi, which is mm -hmm. the subject of so many of these racist movies. Yeah, it is capital A acting. It's it's incredible work from Deadweiler. Uh, it is a sh it may be the best performance of the year. Um, just not including not even mm -hmm. taking into mind gender, like it just may be the best yeah. performance of the year. Uh, so it's really weird that it's not nominated. I think if the Andrea Riseborough thing hadn't been at the expense of Daniel Deadweiler, and uh, to a degree, um, uh, who's in the woman king? Why is the name Viola Davis? Me? Viola Davis, if it, if it mm -hmm. hadn't been such a, a couple of amazing black performances that got kind of snubbed by that, I don't know that it would have been as controversial as it was. In fact, it may have been celebrated as like a grassroots interesting thing that that happened. Yeah. But the fact that those two performances got left out, I think, is is what leaves a bad taste in the mouth uh, from that whole thing. Uh, Navalny is the front runner for documentary feature of the year. Uh, it, it shows here that I'm the only one who saw this. That's correct. This is this is one I missed. Yeah, I did not get a chance oh to see God. this one. Both of you need to watch Navalny. This is uh, if you want to talk about like a story that's like unbelievable. You if you didn't if they didn't film this, you would never believe this type of thing. Uh, uh of course Alexei Navalny is the was uh, someone who ran against uh, Vladimir Putin in, in Russia and uh was uh suddenly became uh he he was easily like uh you know uh, became followed and uh and uh and Putin wanted to put an end to that guy quickly and of course there's um uh, a story of him getting poisoned and and having to get uh somehow out of a russian hospital and and sent to a i think he went to a french hospital because he couldn't trust the russian doctors and all this this stuff going on in that but how he finds out he needs to find out proof he needs to find proof that putin could be behind this and the way he finds it and the way he gets it is like fist pumping stuff uh nice. when you watch it and uh this guy's um, in jail I, right now right he is he is yeah. he um um he he came back to moscow like uh planning on just sort of living his life i mean obviously he knew that he would be in trouble when he came back but he got arrested immediately when he got uh, some kind of trumped up bs charge too from what i read yeah yeah it is um but uh yeah and and so he's he's been in jail for the last, I think two or three years at this point, but, um, I'm excited well to watch worth, it. Well worth watching. It's on HBO max. You can easily see it. Um, I'm watch that tonight. Uh, then there's prey, which was probably one of the biggest, uh, releases not to hit theaters and was just, uh, streaming. Um, Jeremy, this movie is perfect. Um, 
This movie is absolutely perfect in my mind. Everything is there for a reason. I've said it a million times. Uh, the foreshadowing is not overt. Uh, so that when it comes back around, you're like, oh, that's why we saw the thing rather than seeing it the first time going, that's going to come back later. Um, mm -hmm. And I just think it's a really creative, clever way to make the Predator series new uh, is to take it back in time by a couple of centuries. Even the Predator is not as advanced as he is in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Mm -hmm. um, and I think all the performances are great. This is this is my in my top five for sure of the year. Um, uh, it's great. You know yeah, no, I was just, I was just going to jump on, uh, that band way, uh, wagon, just Amber mid thunder is amazing mm -hmm. in this movie. Mm -hmm. And how great is, is Trachtenberg? Like, uh, like he continues to make these incredible movies that just kind of fly under the radar. I'm just, I'm waiting for him to, to break out. He's also made some great ep episodes of television, uh, as well. He's directed a couple like of an X-Men movie or fantastic four or something, man. Like, yeah. Like, or, maybe not. or maybe just give him more money to make something he wants to make, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yes, uh, he, he's incredible. I really dug prey too. I didn't, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was a stripped down version of something that we'd, you know, seen before, but like, like, it, so it totally works the way that that way and uh i i really enjoyed it as well the unbearable weight of massive talent yes. uh i tell you i don't know what uh, there's there's a variety of things that got pedro pascal into this like stratosphere mm -hmm. i mean you yeah. know uh game of thrones mandalorian uh, all these things, but this is maybe the beginning of everybody loving pedro pascal even though this wasn't like a huge hit yeah uh it, it was still a decent hit it was a decent enough hit and uh god he's so good in this movie oh my gosh he commits to this character there's such a purity of his love for nicholas cage and nicholas cage mm -hmm. movies yeah um, and uh guarding tess <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> this yeah, movie yeah. i think is uh it's cliche to say but this is a love letter to movies and loving movies and making friends over your shared love of movies um mm -hmm. This is also in my top five of the year. I'm not ashamed oh, to say. Wow. <laughs> uh, I've seen this movie four or five times now, and uh, I, I, just I, the end is just a little bit too much. That that final action thing, but it, it also has to do that to fully complete what it's trying to do. Um, yeah, I adore it. I just I love it so much. Um, Thirteen Lives, which is another movie that I think I had in my top five at one point. I'm not sure if it would be there now, but it's certainly a contender. Um, that was, I mean, Ron Howard, man, the guy does these type of movies better than anything that he does. Mm. When it he really does, is Apollo 13, right? Like it really yeah. has a lot of those same beats. Yeah, it's 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 really good. Yeah. Um. Uh. And uh, more Colin Farrell love, man. He had a good year. He really did. Um, uh, after Yang, I didn't see this one. Oh man, it's been months and months, but I remember thinking it was a very thoughtful, introspective look at you know, individuality and humanity. And uh, I can't speak much more on it. With isn't Colin Farrell in this too? I was going to say, speaking of Colin Farrell having an mm. amazing year, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, uh, I just remember really liking it. I need to go back to it. No, it's really good. Um, it's for me what I love about this kind of movie is how fully realized the universe is. Uh, there's something about, it's not quite to the level of like her, where mm. I'm just like, oh, this is the future. But it has a lot of those same elements where it's like, oh yeah, this makes a lot of, like that whole like family dance off, you yeah. know, global game that they do or whatever is, uh, it's just, it's really interesting and heartwarming and just kind of sets everything up for, uh you know exploring what sentience is what yeah. it means to um to live to exist uh this is a you know, question that movies and culture will probably continue to deal with as ai becomes uh you know more and more prevalent of what makes uh you know what makes life what is life and mm -hmm. uh so yeah it's it's an interesting exploration of that uh, we've got about 11 movies left to go through to speed through Rosaline is another one or Rosaline. Um, yeah. Caitlin Deaver can do no wrong in my book. She's got range. <laughs> yeah. 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 I like her quite a bit. 
Uh, don't worry, darling. One of the bigger disappointments for me this year, Aaron, what'd you think? Yeah, it's, it's a big disappointment. And I think worth talking about just because it's kind of those, like what went wrong here kind of movies. Like Mm -hmm. when you're dealing with a concept that in my opinion, is this interesting? Like there's, there's a really interesting concept underneath here without trying to spoil too much. But the movie has no idea how to handle it. Like no yeah. idea what's going to be an, an interesting or fun experience for the audience in handling it. And and also no real effort in making it make sense. So I don't think yeah, I this- checked the sheet as having watched it, but I have tried to watch it three times. I just have yet <laughs> to finish it. <laughs> you did check the sheet as having watched it, but yeah. uh, <clears throat> the the thing for me, and this is one of the, the epitome of, of all of these movies this year, um, I'm tired of, I'm tired of people setting up the su- movies to setting up the surprise. That's not that big of a deal. And that mm. if you knew, if you knew the surprise early on, you could make a better movie a lot of times. And mm. this is that for me. Yes. If mm. you knew the surprise early on, then this movie becomes a lot better and a lot more tense. Uh, but they, but this movie seems to think that it's got a huge surprise in store, even though you've seen the village and you've seen other movies mm. like it. Um, that's, that was my biggest problem with it was that you knew what the surprise was pretty much going into it and Mm. and uh and so i was i was i was just like just go ahead and tell us we are savvy audience just tell us the surprise and then have florence pew trying to get out of it with the knowledge of what she has and then that becomes every scene becomes tenser at that point Mm -hmm. uh for me Yep. Um, <laughs> Morbius. <laughs> I forgot about oh, that. Oh God! Fuck. <laughs> I, the first Aaron when you wanted s- to talk about Morbius. <laughs> I really did because the the first thing you said when uh, you were like when I think you said the Black Adam may have been the worst superhero movie of the year, and I was like, yeah. oh, let's not forget about Morbin time because yeah. that was a real thing that happened. Uh, mm-hmm. just what, just everything about this movie is terrible and wild. So, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. The, uh, yeah, scream or scream five, whatever you want to call it. Um, I didn't like this at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, but I don't know. It, uh, introduced us to Jenna Ortega to a lot, uh, introduced a lot of us to Jenna Ortega and I thought she was good in it. Um, but I thought it was fun. I, maybe I just have mm, a thing for meta movies and maybe. I mean, the scream franchise is the meta est of the mm. metas. And, uh, it's just, you know, there's, there's clever things that happen in this movie, uh, that I had a good time with. Um, it's not mm. in my, you know, top movies of sure. year or anything, but I had fun with sure. it. Sure. So, yeah. Uh, bodies, 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 which I know Jeremy hates. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't uh, hate this movie. I don't hate it. I, I, I it. dug it. I dug it just because it it's basically like it made a whole horror movie out of basically what about so, like social media bullshit basically is what it made, it made a whole horror movie out of that. Um, and everybody in this is so dumb and sort of deserves quote unquote what they get. <laughs> Uh, it could also be another eat the rich movie if you really want to look at it that Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think. Uh, Pete Davidson is the, the the Richie Rich of this Eat the Rich thing, and I think in the wait is that did we send that video? I should shut up. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, he has a fucking gymnasium in his house. He's got swords hanging on the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, what I like about this movie is that in the end, it is not at all what you thought you were uh, watching, uh, and I think it's very clever in that regard. I got a big laugh right near the end. And that redeemed the movie a bit for me. But yes, these people are insufferably stupid. They're terribly mean to each other. And I think that's the point. And I think the reason I didn't connect fully is I just feel like other movies have come before this that satirized influencer culture better than this movie does. Um, But I didn't hate it. I will say that. I didn't hate it. I just, I, I was just uh, offended when Rachel uh, Sonnet was talking about her podcast and how much uh, I felt attacked. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I really enjoyed this movie. This is in my top movies of the year. I think it's, it may even be in my top 15. I'd have to look. But um, I, I loved everything I had to say. And even more than that, loved how it was structured. I thought it was really smartly structured, uh, yeah. especially for a slasher flick. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and really enjoyed it. So yeah, I yeah that's why I dug things. it. Uh, yeah. ultimately, um, the, probably the funniest movie of the year is weird. The Al Yankovic story, uh, 
Uh, I don't know if there was anything funnier this year. Maybe not for me. Know. It definitely hit me exactly uh, where it intended to. I think the movie makes some really genius turns. There's a turn with uh, the the. I'm just gonna say the song. I think it's "Fat" uh, is the is the mm -hmm. Weird Al song. Yeah. Um, and there's a turn that this movie makes that I never saw coming, and I was just on the floor laughing. It is this yeah. movie is really really funny. It's it's got that same walk hard feel, uh, and walk hard is a classic at this point. I feel like um, mm -hmm. and it's got that same feel, and it's it may be even goofier than walk hard is. Uh, you can't and, even walk. You can't even watch walk the line anymore without laughing. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you can't of walk hard. And, uh, Nick yeah. in the chat is correct. It was eat it actually was where that turn happened. Was with the uh, with the eat it. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. um fresh not the one we uh, recommended on this very uh on this uh <laughs> podcast another fresh which a lot of people thought we meant when we first uh, uh we're gonna do fresh okay what is this fresh about this is one i just wanted to bring up because i think you guys might really enjoy this uh mm -hmm. it is the type of horror movie that i think really holds together it's some of the best uh I've ever seen somebody tear about uh, tear apart dating culture from the perspective of a woman and mm. just the idea of just how clueless men children can be sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I just, I really, really liked Fresh. I thought it was good. And uh, Sebastian Stan is really good mm. in it. Um, he's having a good year too. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, good luck to you, Leo Grand, which is the first time I've ever seen those words strung together. <laughs> so tell me. <laughs> uh, really? Uh, yeah. Man, this is, uh, is it Emma Thompson that's in this? Uh, let me let me make sure. Good luck to you, Leo Grand. Uh, yeah, Emma Thompson. Um, she is phenomenal in this. This is a movie that explores sexual repression, uh, her trying to figure out who she is as a sexual being. Um, it has one of the, the uh, best uses of non-sexual nudity in a movie I've ever seen. Hmm. It uh, finishes uh, the movie in a really, really powerful way. It's another one I just wanted to mention because I think you guys might really, really like it and uh, appreciate it uh, okay. and the things that it has to say. So yeah, this is a, a really, really good one. Another movie called Hustle came out this year. So many movies want so many movies want to be hustle or hustlers or anything in the past couple <laughs> well, of years. The hustle. What is this? Yeah, or the hustle. What is this hustle about? This is Sandler. Uh this is Sandler's basketball movie that came out this year, and it's better mm -hmm. than it has any right to be. Um I you know, Sandler's such an interesting uh actor. Like he'll do really terrible comedy. Uh, to yeah. cash a paycheck and then he'll just be in something that's like a really good sports movie and yeah. uh, like hustle is a really good sports movie i i recommend it so yeah something okay to check out okay. uh i did see this the woman king which was kind of a surprise hit actually uh mm -hmm. uh uh I thought this was really well well done. What did you think about The Woman King? Aaron? I think it's great. Um, mm -hmm. I think there are parts of it I could do without. I think the, the mm -hmm. movie could use a little more time in the, the editing suite, uh, mm -hmm. but there's some really great performances, some really interesting story turns, and beyond that, the action is, is incredible. I know there's some controversy with focusing on this group and their relationship to the slave trade. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I understand that that controversy is there. I've read some uh, stuff on it. Um, but as far as a movie goes, I think this this is a pretty uh, incredible one. So yeah. Yeah, I thought it was pretty solid. And finally, we end it with Vengeance. Uh, this is, um, man, I'm doing horrible with names today. Uh, it is with the guy from The Office. Um, Oh, it's a BJ Novak. BJ Novak. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this is the BJ Novak film. I wanted to mention it because it is uh, unique, original, and interesting enough that I think you guys might enjoy it. It also has some of the sharpest social commentary that I've seen in a while. There's a, the, the movie opens with this whole scene of just him and another dude bro uh, talking together, but they just keep saying 100%, 100%. 100%. And it just destroys <laughs> this thing that is just like overtaken culture where every single human of every single gender and every single age says 100% as a way to yeah. agree to something. Uh, so it's right. just that kind of insight 
uh, in interest that I found. Also, Ashton Kutcher is really good in it, um, mm. which is kind of hit or miss for me. Um, so, <laughs> uh, and it has some interesting things to say about vengeance. And uh, I'm not actually sure I agree with the message of this movie, but oh, yeah? I did. It did have me thinking. So I thought <laughs> it was worth mentioning. Okay, so that was roughly sixty movies, and we missed about a hundred and so. There's a, that's how many <laughs> movies there are. I mean, like not everything's worth talking about. Even some of the movies we brought up, not even worth talking about um but uh it's time i believe to award our favorite movie of the year i think mm. it's pretty obvious what that's going to be but mm. here we go i'm going to start with you jeremy what is your favorite movie this year i really wanted to throw a curveball i really <laughs> really wanted to because i like chaos but i think the best movie of the year is everything everywhere all at once mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay aaron what was your favorite movie of the morbius year? Uh, Morbius, there it is. We put it on the chalk. It's you can't, can't take it back. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm. yeah. It's, this is unanimous. I think this is the maybe the first unanimous in a long time that yeah. we've had. Uh, uh, the, the movie is just straight up original, fun, funny, dramatic. Hits you all in the right spots. Um, um, everything about this is great. I think there's been maybe if there's anything to really nitpick about it, there's just, I don't know. There's it's even the nitpicks don't really matter. I mean, yeah. nitpicks never matter, but like none of the things, <laughs> nothing really matters uh, as far as, uh, uh, if you wanted to tear this movie apart. Um, but, uh, yeah, this was an easy one. Um, uh, I don't, I couldn't think of anything that even came close to this one for me uh this year um, I, I am curious do do you guys want to say your number twos or have you thought about that at all um what would have been like i never uh, gave serious i never i haven't made an official ranking um because i didn't th think it was going to go past this right but i yeah. probably would go with the fallout for my second one i know we didn't mm. talk about it much and nobody talks about it because it came out in january of 2022 mm. uh but that movie deeply affected me um mm -hmm. uh so yeah that probably be my second yeah the menu would have been my number two that would have been um, my third. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I would, it would have been either something like Banshees of Inishirin or 13 Lives or something like that. Man, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm processing about 12 movies I watched over the weekend, too. So, <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know where they fit into all this. Um, but, uh, something, something like those would probably be in the, the conversation. Um, but, uh, anyway, um, once again, would love to uh, like to thank uh, chat for coming out and yeah. uh and um, i tell you what uh, li live chat stick around mm -hmm. after the show and if there are any movies that we didn't mention from 2022 i will hang around and uh, chat about those with uh with yeah, you if you want very so, nice of you yeah mm -hmm. you must mm -hmm. have eaten something before we started because <laughs> i have to go to lunch <laughs> rapidly <laughs> Um, um we do want to give out next week's homework as we shift back to yeah. the recotopia main format it's my choice, um, and I'm glad to tell you that Wag the Dog is now on HBO Max um, or Amazon Prime if you have a premium subscription. And I have not seen Wag the Dog in maybe 20 years, uh, and I remember it as a biting satire about politics and war, and I'm excited to go back. You're going to see baby Kristen Dunst in this movie, um, and uh, I'm excited to see it. So there you go. That's next week's homework. All right um well that's gonna do it for the main episode aaron's gonna stick by and uh talk mm -hmm. to you about other movies uh that uh that came out in the year thank you aaron for doing that yeah, uh, yeah what a nice that's, guy uh, <laughs> that's really that's that's really decent of you um but uh yeah uh wag the dog next uh next uh homework uh next week and um thank you guys for coming out uh again to watch us uh that's gonna be it for this see episode ya. see ya Bye. Bye. Be a part of the live show by being a member of the Sin Club at Patreon at patreon.com slash cinemasins. Chat with us on the Cinemasins Discord at discord.gg slash cinemasins or Cinemasins Twitter at cinemasins and email any comments or questions to recotopia at cinemasins.com. That's R-E-C-O-T-O-P-I-A at cinemasins.com. Um, somebody mentioned the Northmen. Um, the Northmen happened pretty early on uh, in the year, uh, but I remember thinking it was um, spectacular to watch. 
uh, but came off a little bit as almost, it almost felt a little animated to me, like almost anime, um, which is a, 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 a type of over-realism that doesn't always appeal to me. But um, but the Northman's really good. I was actually surprised it didn't get a little more just kind of at least in the conversation uh, during uh, award season. James says, uh, thank you for sticking around, Aaron. Did you watch Wendell and Wild? If so, how did you feel about it? I did watch Wendell and Wild. I thought it was good. I uh, didn't think it was great. It didn't to me live up to Coraline and Nightmare Before Christmas and some of the other movies they've made. But um uh, but you could you could really feel the key and peel of it uh, of it all, which is a good thing. Um, but overall, I just didn't quite connect to it uh, as much as I wanted to. Uh, Link says, "What was the worst movie of the year?" I think it's really easy to say Morbius uh, was the worst movie of the year, um, but I think that's mostly because of the prominence. And um, I would actually, you know, I should open my my whole list here. Um, so I can take a look because there, I mean, there's always stuff that's just bad. There's just like Halloween ends. Halloween ends was probably the worst movie of the year on it. If I'm being honest, um, for me, I think that was terrible. Rando says turning red was touched on, but it was a miss for me. And I actually liked turning red big surprise. The Pixar guy likes Pixar movie, but I didn't like Lightyear uh, as much, but I think turning red is really good. I think Domi, she really has a handle on her perspective and what she wants to do. And, um, and I, I really enjoyed it. I thought the the themes were, were really, really good. Uh, let's see. No, Eduardo says, hi, Aaron. I didn't catch up from the beginning. Did you guys talk about men? No, we did not talk about men. Uh, I enjoyed men more than most, I think. I think a lot of people are put off by how overt the metaphor is. That doesn't bother me. Um, this movie does not read to me like a story with a metaphor. This movie reads to me like a metaphor that has a little bit of story and um i thought the child the the man birth uh scene uh at the at the end was um as grotesque and explicit as it was it it's the it really is the most dramatic way to reveal that metaphor of um you know uh, generational trauma uh, so yeah, um, and the uh, the tunnel scene, the tunnel the tunnel echo scene is one of my favorite scenes of the year. Just astonishing filmmaking, uh, that tunnel e echo scene. So yeah, I really liked that. Nolan says, "How about see how they run?" Thought it was an, another good who done it with some screenplay jokes put in. Yeah, I actually really liked to see how they run. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, it doesn't feel to me like one I have to rewatch. But I enjoyed the, the you know, the uh, way it was structured, and I did think it was hilarious. And Saoirse Ronan can do no wrong. Like, I just, I love Saoirse. She's amazing. Finn says, Jackass Forever. Um, both Jackass Forever and whatever the half movie, do they call it like uh, 4.5 or, or, or whatever? I actually liked the 0.5 movie more because it felt more like it was saying something with some of the interstitial interviews they did. Um, the Jackass movies don't... Uh, appeal to me they appeal to the human side of me <clears throat> that goes you people are insane what are you doing like there's certainly that entertainment gladiatorial you know kind of thing but i think i have that cognitive dissonance where i'm like am i does that is that feeling good is that feeling of oh my goodness johnny knoxville is going to get himself killed by a bull it almost did by the way in fact he's talked about how he thinks that's the closest he's ever been to dying on camera um, is it good, is it good for me to be entertained by that? Whether I am or not, you know, it's almost beside the point. Is it, is it good? Uh, and so I, I deal with that. And so I kind of go back and forth on those movies, uh, quite a bit. Uh, Castro says, I wanted to defend Lightyear. That's fine. Castro, you go ahead. You defend Lightyear. That is, I'm glad. I love it when people love movies, even movies I didn't enjoy. Rando Dave, how about Emily the Criminal? I haven't seen it, but I've got it on my list. Well worth a watch. Um, it is uh, it is one of those movies where you're going to end up really considering the protagonist and their relationship to the decisions and the ethical things, the, the ethical choices they're making, the moral choices they're making during the movie. 
Um, and she's amazing. Uh, she's doing such great work and is having a good year uh, as well. Nolan says, how about the ones Apple released this year? Cha-Cha Real Smooth, Greatest Beer Run, Causeway. Enjoy them all, but Cha-Cha is the standout. Cha-Cha Real Smooth is really good. It's really good. Uh, I enjoyed that. Actually, I enjoyed all three of those movies. Uh, greatest Beer Run, I was not expecting to like as much as I did. Um, I thought it was a really well-told story. Causeway is the Brian Tyree Henry and uh, Jennifer Lawrence, and they're both doing great work in it. I just couldn't vibe with the movie. I just couldn't find my way into um, just locking into the movie in a way where I was enjoying watching it. So, um, but it's good. It's good. Causeway is a good movie that I just didn't necessarily enjoy watching. Uh, DPW nine four seven five says, "Any love for Spiderhead?" Um, yeah, a little bit. That was Kaczynski too, right? Um, and Joseph Kaczynski is one of my favorite directors. And I, I wanted, I forgot, but I wanted to give him a shout out uh, for Top Gun Maverick. Uh, but I think he did Spiderhead as well. And, and there are some things I really liked about it. I just think that the movie falls apart towards the end. Um, and I think our two leads are in two different movies. Both movies I would have enjoyed watching but together they the tones don't quite match up um together so spiderhead was really close to being a movie i really enjoyed nate 1033 says year in review is my favorite episode let's go uh let's we win rando uh, uh dave says death on the nile i really liked it but feel like i'm on an island yeah yeah i think you're on an island too uh very disappointing very disappointing after how much i enjoyed uh, murder on the orient express James says, do you have any 2023 movies you're excited about? Yes. Best way to hear me talk about that is probably to download the 2023 preview episode on Sift Pop, uh, which is uh, the podcast uh, that I do weekly on pop culture. Um, so uh, we do a uh, anticipated movies episode every year, and that episode is already in the feed. Um, so yeah, we talk about all that stuff. Good night, Oppie. Yes, good night, Oppie was a good doc. Yeah, that was that was a really interesting one to watch. I've also been catching up on For All Mankind uh, recently, and by catching up, I mean starting to watch it and just binging the whole thing. And the whole going to Mars thing is, I there's just something about space travel I find really, really compelling. And the good night, Oppie stuff plays into that for sure. Bullet Train. I really liked Bullet Train. I feel like I'm on an island on that. I I love how it took plot convenience and made it a plot point. Like, I, I love how it took that thing about movies that we can nitpick and be distracted by and was like, no, that's the point of this movie. This movie is about convenience. This movie is about luck. Um, I, I really thought that was smart and allowed the movie to do some really interesting things and never have to worry about people going, oh, that's so convenient that it, because that's the point of the movie. So I really enjoyed Bullet Train. I thought Brad Pitt was really good in it too. Gray Man. I kind of liked Gray Man. I thought it was fun. I That's the kind of movie, like when I mentioned, like I like uh, can get into just a straight, well-structured, well-paced action movie that doesn't have to be like world-changing or do things differently. Like I like that genre. I like action. So um, Gray Man, I thought was fun. Shaggy says Lost City was ug. You're wrong, Shaggy. Lost City is actually really good. Uh, really well done. I had a lot of fun with that one. Uh, why aren't we bashing Moonfall? It's a fair point. Uh, there's just so many movies to get through that uh, that it's hard to talk about them all. Um, Moonfall deserves the bashing. Um, is it possible you could have fun with some of Moonfall, though? Like, if you let go of some of that stuff, like, it's possible there's some fun scenes in Moonfall. It's possible. Terrible movie. But I may have had fun a couple times. I was surprised we didn't talk about Smile. None of the three of us marked it to talk about uh I think it's because none of us is very passionate about the movie. Uh, I really disliked the movie. This was another movie I saw at uh, Fantastic Fest. And um, I just think it's there's nothing interesting about it. There's nothing new or interesting about it. Everything about this movie has been done before in better ways. Uh, overall, conceptually, It Follows is a much better version of this movie, in my opinion. Um and I just, I didn't feel like, I, I guess, I guess what I would say is technically there are some interesting things going on here. There's interesting things about the way it's made, but structurally and story-wise, there was nothing interesting to me. 
And Nick said Aaron made everyone cry at Sin Week talking about ambulance. That's right. That, I totally forgot that. I don't think everyone cried. I was certainly crying. Um, because there is some there is some stuff in this movie about making uh, first responders superheroes. And they are. They are superheroes. I am here because of first responders. I'm here, first of all, because of my wife who saved my life. And uh, secondly, because of the first responders that showed up uh, seven minutes later after she called. Um, so, yeah, very personal stuff. Any love for bros? Yes, Eduardo. I really did like bros. I thought it was a really wonderful rom-com um, and enjoyed it. I also enjoyed Spoilers, The Hero Dies at the End. Um, another one that I felt like put a little bit of spin on uh, some tropes and, and really, really enjoyed that as well. I should say, as always... If we bash, if I bash, if if we bash a movie that you love, do not feel bad about that. Love what you love, man. Uh, it's so important for the beauty of art to be subjective. And man, just enjoy what you enjoy. Like there's a jealousy for me. Like you, when you say you enjoyed Fall or you enjoyed, like I get jealous. I don't get judgmental or angry. I get jealous. I wish I had the same experience because I love loving movies. Um, and then just sometimes I don't. I don't love them.